Okay. Welcome to the first episode of the podcast that doesn't have a name. Um, my name is Tolu uh, from the Tolu uh, Afo uh, broadcast. You know me from Twitch. Um, it's at twitch.com or that twitch.tv slash Tolu Afo. And I'm, I'm joined here by, by two distinguished gentlemen, um, uh, individuals, people. Human beings that I know from um, from a, from a past life, i.e., college, that thing that that uh, that happened sometime, and uh, we're about to talk about some interesting stuff. So on on my for for the people viewing on 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 like my left above me on the left, we have uh, Caden. Um, he he is uh, he's an individual who has um, some experience in uh, you know I don't know stuff pertaining to engineering. Uh, mechanic life life yes yeah, sorry sorry he, he's he's a student of life honestly we're all students students of life so you know he he has his own skill set and he has some some ideas about some some of the mechanics probably of some of these things which might be an interesting thing not really nope. like he doesn't really he's not he's not going to claim it but i'm going to put it on him. you know what i'm saying i'm going to make him be that you know be the person <laughs> because none of us are experts like that's like the first thing out the gate i think there's people who know more than others on this call but we're not any like none of us are going to be like yes we're going to debate some archaeologist or something maybe this guy will the guy on my right uh top right over here uh jacob he, he is uh another individual that i um met his, his uh oh his camera <laughs> that I lagged out for a second that uh so <laughs> he's, he's he's pretty sick honestly he's kind of a he's a chill he's a chill viber and uh if, you, if you're looking for a chill time and a dude to uh, talk with until for like four hours into the night he's definitely he's definitely the guy for that so um he, he he's uh he's, he's i would i don't know if he's gonna let me say this but he's, he seems to be fairly knowledgeable about this topic and a lot of adjacent surrounding topics so um well, yeah we're gonna just talk about them have a discussion of a set of things and see how it goes so um yeah i guess i'm gonna kick it off with a question that they already were like this, we shouldn't use this question, but I'm going to use it anyway. Um, what do you What do you guys think of just like the subject of Egyptology as like a a sub topic of like archaeology or anthropology? It's cool. <laughs> yeah, it's I one agree. of the one of the cool ones. Like, okay, so <laughs> true. I so, agree with Egyptology. Yeah, so honestly, I'm a big Egyptology fan. I think the the first thing though that like comes to me, <laughs> you guys are useless. That comes to me is that like, like why would there just be a topic s discussing Egyptology specifically, versus like archaeology where you have all these different disciplines that come together? It feels like Egyptology has this like special place where you don't see people calling like I don't know, like the study. Is there like a word for the study of Native Americans or Native American cultures or try like it's so I feel like. On that level, I already feel like there's like an interesting dynamic there. But um, probably is right. I imagine there would be. Yeah, maybe. Okay, maybe I should look that like, up. Is uh, so there's Greek mythology, right? <laughs> That's mythology, but like, um, I'm That's guessing true. they would have some sort of word for other cultures. Right. Well, Egypt is a Greek word, and the study of Egypt, like the title Egyptology, is necessarily western like they didn't refer to themselves as egypt around the time period when we say they came out of barbaricism like okay. they it called was themselves egypt? there was no it's kemet kemet k is it k-h-e-m-e-t k yeah i think there was an h i'm not sure feels like but you know you guys ever hear about Im imhotep yes. yeah i believe i've heard yeah are you talking yeah, about so the dudes that... who sorry, was... <laughs> are you no, talking what... about the dudes on on the in New York that are always um trying to convert people to um the become black, black, the, black Israelites? The black Israelis? The hoteps. <laughs> Alright, my bad. <laughs> okay, no, was, uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry, bro, you never sorry. see those dudes? Anyway, sorry. sorry. That's but bad. I Let's they not try to get into that. I don't think so, bro. I don't think you no. have the complexion they're looking for, but uh well, yeah, but as long as they have those passion. Groups are really open. Yeah. Wait, wait. Hey, you never know, bro. You know, things are becoming more progressive. You know? Life is like right. Anyway, uh so you're gonna say something about Imhotep. 
<laughs> yeah, dude, he was sick. He was yeah. so cool, dude. He was a cool man. Um, so, okay, I guess... But... Okay, go ahead. What I'm, so, but him and uh, a lot of other dudes, too, like, what we would call probably, like, um, like, nobles, or, like, there would be, like, magicians or alchemists type stuff but like alchemy like chemistry all that stuff comes from kemet so it's the first original like saucing you know Sa- like saucing. ground up yeah ground up like plants and shit like that like all those concoctions <clears throat> and the po the like the recipes for this making dyes all very stuff. specific yeah and more than just dyes medicines like imhotep what helped out with childbirth a lot it was um but uh and a bunch of other stuff like construction you know it's crazy um like cement kind of like what i i don't Order. he he yeah he could be associated with um that type of stuff he was some of the smaller uh, um less um survived pyramids uh that are attributed to him like the ones that you, you can see the wooden pillars in the center and he is like yeah, brick and mortar stuff, but that stuff's kind of more eroded by now. Um, but the like, um, they were a learned people, and like they they were doing a lot of geometry and mixing stuff together. And they had they were the original like the 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 knowers, like they were in the know, like them in India were both they were hip. big big boys, like know. big boys in in like when, yeah, when you say the, in the know, like what do you mean? They were the civilized ones. The rest of okay. the they fucking were drinking coffee instead of cyb- liquor. Yeah, <laughs> except they bro, they they, coffee, but... they were mummifying shit, and they're actually like right, dedicated to making stuff. Like, yeah, um, but and all the Greeks, like even the the so the Stoics and the people before mm, Plato's era, um, like the, uh, not Stoics. What am I talking about? S- pre-socratics not stoics pre-socratic um not uh fuck the whatever they were a group of greeks dude and they all went to egypt to study and then they would come back to greece and then hang out in their towns and like profess basically be like stunned on the the bitches you're not talking about with the knowledge that they got stunting like yo be my be my be my girl i i understand the concept of of uh thinking uh logically yeah. Us- using like, reason. <laughs> Have my children. Yeah. Honestly, I, I respect yeah. that approach. That's what they um, do. Interesting. Okay, so, like, I know. Is, but is, so to your point, right? Like, that would mean I don't know. I wouldn't. I, I kind of get the impression that it's just Egyptology. Egyptology is really interesting. There's a lot to show for it. Uh, a lot that's like immediately presented to people. Right. The pyramids are something you can go visit very easily. It's not like a I don't, know. I don't know. But the point being is, like, I think Egyptology is just one of the more popular. Yeah, it's just like countries. it's such a maybe it's just because of the fact that it's such like a high density field that there's just a lot to discuss within it. So they said, okay, let's specify, which is fair. Well, the um, field of Egyptology and archaeology that kind of blossomed was like around the same time when they first like Napoleon, right after Napoleon went there. And he's like checked out that shit. And then Napoleon stayed overnight in a pyramid. And then he was like scared shitless for the rest of his life to never talk about it again or something like that. That's he thought like, he pissed off some gods. Some ghosts pulled up on him. But speaking some, of pyramids. But, but like the first people that went there to do real archaeology and wrote down what they did instead of pillage mm. stuff and then barter with rich people or kings so, so. that in the past that were had a mon- like something to trade. Um basically the black market uh the but petrie flindis petrie so he went went and when he was digging all this shit out did he make the petrie dish i think he was associated with his family or something i don't know usually they're in like families because they have extra time to learn fanciful nothings true and um the yeah i mean that's high society um the so like when he was documenting this stuff he was like what the fuck is going on bro like we don't make this shit 
like at that time what's what's the western what civilization kind of was like at a loss to describe and everything else like not just everything related to like, what's the uh, the were... plaza like the giza plaza yeah the giza plateau so, so, plateau a, a I, literally I, artificial right. plateau right that, that yeah. was created so yo can we go through the um like the pyramid so i when people think the pyramids I yeah i'd be sick oh, we, should, right. we should take a trip we should go through like so we have um is the three great pyramids i want to i want to get an idea of like what like what are like i guess what are they is a simple question i suppose but like how were they constructed and in particular though like what was the what is the accepted um sequence of events that 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 uh that it um is accredited with creating these pyramids um that are currently in giza I think the idea is that it's not accepted, but what you find in books is that um, they kind of gloss over all the construction. I don't think they talk much, like at least from what I remember, they taught me. They, they were sort of answers. just like, yeah, they're just like, yo, during Kuf like Khufu, I had this great rain, yeah. built these pyramids. It's a marvel of engineering, um, and then that's enough for you. Okay, let's let's draw let's steal is it steel man the argument let's let's see let's see if we can understand the the the, the what's it the the theory itself but then also just like the the context around it like and then we can start to just figure out why it doesn't make sense um so i i mean from what i understand there's like one there's a concept of however many like thousands of of like what 50 or 20 20 ton blocks you don't the exact number, but how Bro, many... over a hundred tons? Yeah, so each block, well, hundreds tons. of tons. So, so no, not each block, but like some um, of them. Some you have some blocks of, of the size of a hundred tons or more, and greater. And so and a lot of them, yeah, around they, at least yeah, fifty or They are estimated to have been built around like uh, was like the time frame is like four thousand five hundred BC under the reign of one uh, pharaoh by the name of Khufu um using like i guess like was it um like slave labor and just like man hours is that like that's kind of essentially the concept right is there details i'm missing well yeah they may they really pushed that it was a national project that this guy got enough fucking momentum together to be like motherfuckers i'm gonna die right here and y'all okay. are gonna invent geometry. <laughs> yeah, it's like you're going to you're going. Okay, actually, so that, yeah, we can get there's there's some stuff we can get into about geometry relating to this that I think will be very valuable. But like, I think just hitting home the concept of like what these like it's like almost like was it three hundred and fifty and it used to be even taller, three hundred eighty feet tall, like these massive things, like these massive. Um, objects that are supposed to have been basically built by hand um, and using like simple copper stone chisels. yeah copper chisels and water and sand along with like no wheels right there was not there was no um, wheel having been invented at that point okay. yeah and, and hemp rope yep that's... well hemp is very strong hemp is very strong but that's yeah that's another key thing to mention is the hemp rope was like tying knots so uh, a bunch of boy scout <laughs> sissies no uh, sorry uh they they I have you know well so i think it's one thing, thing to mention the height of the pyramid but it's more so like the size of the building blocks and the casing stones that they use because like I can find the dimensions but go ahead yeah. the base the foundational stones is it's, yeah even that too crazier all of it it's just um Although, yeah, not like even the crazier. plateau Sorry. stones. All of it. No, no, you're right. You're right, though. It's it is the plateau that they built that they just cut into this this area, like the stones that that make up that as well. Is that what you're talking about? I'm not right. too familiar actually on how the foundation was built. Was it like partly cut into the bedrock? Yeah, I mean, Bro, yeah, the the ba the area on the bottom of the um one of the at least one of the I don't know how if it's for each one 
one of the big ones, the two sisters, um, like a, at least half, or something. It blew my mind the size of the stone that it's like one piece that has to has the whole pyramid resting on it because they had to even out this like chunk of land and then like half of it is just like one big ass f flat as fuck stone, like flatter than flatter than paper, like. You know, like, um, it's like serious I'm not... dimensional, like, <laughs> severe yeah. dimensional. Um, it was just a yeah. big ass foundational stone. But the another, so going back to what, how the original Egyptological description of their construction fits fits it. You have to understand that bronze isn't gonna cut the stone. It's the sand and water that they're putting in between the bronze. And, uh, and the stone because the sand has little, little hard metals and like quartz and shit, right. and little microscopic diamonds or whatever because diamonds are abundant on Earth, and as uh, a scam financially for any listener, don't waste your money on diamonds. It's a blood, in, <laughs> it's an Demers. industry of built on blood, the, the but gold lies, yeah, but yeah, gold, yeah, investing lit. gold, yeah. gold's pretty lit. Uh... Yeah, De Beers is a is a fraudulent company that million millions of dollars off of your emotions. Um, also, everybody go buy Bitcoin too. Wait, don't do that. <laughs> um, but but yeah, but I yeah, it's just like the concept that they're 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 basically creating, like so they're saying that there's like this this concept of having these hard and precious metals and and hard stones mixed within the sand that is then used with water in these these copper drills. Things, not it's used as a cutting fluid. fluid. It's yeah, and then it you, the abrasiveness of much. the fluid. Yeah, it's like abrasive cutting. Now, yeah. Obviously, like instantaneously, one should be able to be like, "Oh, that seems like it would be inaccurate." I don't know if that's a reasonable take. I don't know what you guys think about. Especially when you see lines in the stone that like, like perfect, like that look grooves. like scrapes. That perfect long scrapes that can only that like. Cannot yeah. be done with like sand. with like such a a a, a brutally um uh, what's it called S primitive I guess would be the word not to like say that it isn't a tool that you could use for other things but it's like what is the capacity to to create these massive stone blocks and then just with like not we're not even getting to the part where they were like they were like quarried like like was it hundreds of miles away or something like that but hundreds like of miles away. it's like we're not talking about that yet like we haven't discussed that what we're trying to say is that how do they even cut them out so accurately was it within one it's like three sixtieths of a degree i think it's agreed that even if they cut the stones very close to accurate they wouldn't just be like cut and moved like they were definitely cut and then ground if anything like that and i'm pretty sure um grounding stones or i don't know what they call it, like finishing stones that's something that is mentioned to to be used which uh when you yeah the the stones are, it's really interesting with the stones i think the question that pops in my head when that's brought up is the overall timeline of the pyramids and like how long they say all of them were built Right, because it's supposed to be like 30 years-ish around there. They say they were built, in all of them. Is that rough? <laughs> like, I mean, that's what they say. 80 years. 80? 80-ish. Okay, 80 okay. Years that's better. For, the, for, for some reason, I thought it was low, like 30. Wait, so, also... Well, I mean, yeah, you would have to figure one of them has to be built in 30. Like, I mean, even then, Mike, I would say, like, or, wouldn't it be more interesting of a problem if... Uh, it was told that it took two, like, say it's, say they told us it took 200 years. Yeah, that would be more believable, you know? Say at least a couple, gener few generations. Yeah, and like, actually, honestly, when I was a kid, like, that's what I, I thought was the case. I thought it was like a multi-generation, because I, I've heard of, like, stuff, like, in the period, like, this is actually also crazy, but it's like, when you talk about, like, 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 castles, in the middle evil middle evil medieval period in europe it's like okay. castles would take like 150 years to build a castle 
which is just yeah, so much worse. Fat ass mortar and like the shit in between all these places. Yeah. So disgustingly, like, okay, sorry. They're they're trying their best yeah. there in Europe. Really but, quick, um, the quick Google says sixty years for the Giza complex. Okay. Uh, Wait, what? Right. That was so it's over. Like, yeah. I because I could have sworn it was low. I could have sworn it was yeah, like pretty low. I, I was like hundreds, um, bro. But it, but it's like see the okay. So the concept it doesn't um, make sense. Oh, okay, this is what I was remembering. The Great Pyramid itself, they say, was twenty-seven. So took that to years. me, if they said if they came to us and they were like, the Great Pyramid took them like one hundred fifty years, I would believe that way more. But still, it's like fucking crazy, you know? Yeah, but um, like I guess to like finish that point I was making, it's, it's, it's like this concept of like in me- medieval Europe where people literally it took them like it could take like over a hundred years to build like a castle or something like that where people would work and then they would take on apprentices train their apprentices up and then die of old age and then their apprentices would continue to build these castles and then it's like or like the cathedrals especially the cathedrals like the these religious the sites. gothic ones are really yeah. cool but those were only built during a short interval like mm. they um were right before the bubonic plague when there was like abundance and stuff like that and then there was like a mini ice age or like a volcano yeah. and stuff and there was darkness for many years a lot of people died but that was after the gothic ones were made but then you know like um <laughs> so i guess this is like, a crazy example but one there was one castle in uh mall in mall in mall bark apparently took 700 years to but that's i think it's just like a ridiculous concept yeah there's also 250 years and some other ones barcelona to get to your point about like was it does it make sense that it would be possible like no it doesn't really make sense but uh the thing that really makes it crazy to me is like the timelines that are quoted because if you look like they would have yeah, like what makes had it su- make they would have had su- they would have had some capability to cut um and finish stones um there are like simple tests you can do with water you can just drip water on a surface to see if it runs out to test for like flatness um so there are ways like there are like pretty primal ways to um do things but at the same time it's just like it doesn't fucking make sense like when you put it all together it doesn't make sense okay so we should like think oh yeah go ahead um no i mean like we're talking about stones that are left outside too yeah like the ones that they collected in the museums or the ones that didn't suffer some sort of uh wind and rain for thousands of years um they reflect light like a mirror like you can re- shine a flashlight a high flashlight and it'll, you'll see the that's ridiculous a polished yeah. stone is no yeah no laughing that's absolutely ridiculous matter dude it's like they no. either knew how to do this with like advanced ancient understanding of like chemistry that we just like they had really good methods uh, methods yeah exactly and then like you know eventually got lost because you know libraries burned and people forget things and that's game over just maybe a flood maybe no no uh yeah well i mean Uh, we can get in not we'll get in that we'll get get there i would like to like um, they're not idiots dude they're all smart no yeah but like it's i just want to say like what like when it comes to like this timeline, right? Like what, like what did we think? Like, is it that makes it so impossible? So we have 60 years, right? And like, even given their, the methods of doing it, like, what is the context? What is like the logistical concept? You know, that would make, that would make like Jeff Bezos want to cry. <laughs> like when it comes to build, like to actually building this thing. Either Khufu had like, and I don't mean to discourage anybody that has this. I said no joke, but he must have had OCD, cause, right. th- like, he had to have this perfect. Like, there's not like. It is. It is <laughs> perfect. Like, it is perfect. At and least the 4, people that years like later. suffer that, you know, and I need to have a s- sort of s- something, whatever. Like, I'm sorry, but that's what it looks like. If, like, <laughs> for the I amount mean, of thought that went into what stones to get yeah. like 
which where and what going out and finding them right um but it's like how so how far first of all like yeah where so we have egypt i wonder if we can pull up like a, a map of, of egypt honestly but we have egypt and then we also have like um where this like where the pyramids are near cairo and then like geographically where is the location of the quarries isn't it like that's one and, wh- and where is a lot that of them. it's like down the nile so south um in kilometers i think it's like 500 something 500 oh. some kilometers away it's a long distance it was like yeah 300 miles maybe something like that it could be give or take Okay. So, okay. Okay. So, say we have five five hundred kilometer distance. So these these stones are 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 cut out at that distance, that far away from this quarry, and they're moved to the pyramids. Like how how is that supposed to? Be? I think they said by boat. By boat. That's a river. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So putting that in like the modern context. Like, how, how difficult would it be today to move, like, a 100-ton block of grain by boat? <laughs> it's hard. Like, I so mean, when, like, hard. Like, who today, it wouldn't be ten? too hard, but it wouldn't be an easy thing. Like, No, it, it wouldn't. Would... It's doable, I think. Yeah, but we also have huge like, construction like, equipment that weighs tons. Like, if you put it in the context of today, yeah, if you try to talk about it just, like, manpower nobody's doing that shit but like a hundred tons bro like what is like the largest like those no like, the massive... blocks were not like okay they're not the not the all of them but there were blocks that were a hundred tons right what we um, were yeah, and well over that in Baalbek. really and um damn that's crazy so it's Egypt, like, like like the foundational like, stones that uh, we mentioned earlier like uh the thing is they're brittle at a certain point, like it, when you're hoisting this sh- d- d- big, hefty hunk of Ooh, school hunky. bus, mega <laughs> bus, big like mega block. bus size stone, dude. Like it could crack easy. Yeah. If you like bonk it the right, wrong way. That's it. Get out of here. Like. Okay. So yeah. Oh, you guys are right. That's crazy. I was just looking. The like average stone for the great pyramid like the blocks were like two and a half around that but there are 25 to 80 ton stones in the like king's chamber which is even that's which is crazy. like right? that's above inside. the ground like where is that you know like, okay because it's like you can't even you can't place anything wrong can't you can't make a mistake anywhere in order to to arrive at the level of precision that you end up with Right, like there's no point where you say, "Oh, we were off by such and such measurement," on like a human scale, right? Like where humans can detect the difference, you know? And it's like the people surrounding the time frame, unless like yeah, they were like something insane happened. Like there's just no capacity of that happening. So it's it's quite wild. Cause you just have to like, you just, it's like it's you and your boys shepherding. Uh, goats for some time and you're like hold on let's start let's go in bro you ever hear of one and let's then one off. but to get but when there's one and one there's two and then you <laughs> like go from there to like no. fucking it's like, yeah, astronomy like, it's like 30 minutes it's like <laughs> It's like 30 minutes ago, you were like, yo, one plus one is equal to two. And some people weren't confident that that was the case yet. Like, they hadn't been convinced. And then, like, then you're like, you, you perf, okay. It's like, bro, okay, something that I was just listening recently was just this concept that, like, the, the concept of, of accurate longitudes on maps was not discovered <laughs> as, like, a thing until, like, the 1800s, at least by our modern humans they're like the 1700s and then it's just something that's like effectively um like encoded into the 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 pyramids from uh allegedly 4,500 years ago so it's like how does someone able, how is someone able to describe these things like so accurately and so like globally minded like understanding certain 
things about the curvature of the earth the uh placement in the and pointing the points of these pyramids so that they they interface with the with certain constellations it's just like an equinoxes an equinoxes the the session right of, of the was it the procession of the the at the um astrological Sorry. signs in the in the in the uh in the, in the sky which is uh i uh, i guess my i believe is what the procession is is like a uh a concept of the um stop like the constellation so like or not the constellation like this i have the constellation like the way you have you know you have pisces you have taurus you have like all these different ones that you're 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 the girl you're trying to get with is always talking about and you're like yeah <laughs> yeah of course yeah i love that too oh my rising as well. oh, oh my moon oh my setting and then you're like nice and then like anyway my uh, setting like no, setting. Nice. so you have like a rising star <laughs> setting. <laughs> isn't well, it rising it means, star oh, setting? oh i thought you meant like I, yeah, yeah like yeah, my yeah. general so circumstance. rising waning no nah, so uh, think about like a uh, do you ever spawn a dreidel just like ever or like oh yeah i don't know like so it wobbles yeah, it's, okay circles. more relatable you ever spun a beyblade yes, you brother. Ooh, yeah, yes boy, <laughs> right when they stop to, when they start slowing down their wobble is not like around just a straight axis the axis of rotation starts to rotate and the earth is doing the same thing so uh when they talk about precession like the earth processes and so our north star uh changes like it's not going to always be where it is now um so like for example we're in the time of something right now um where we are right? currently in like pisces the, early. We're in, okay we're, yeah, we're, we're, we're actually in the transition between pisces the fish and aquarius and as an aquarius myself um i'm getting yeah, we'll special probably, powers oh yeah we'll but you're my guy and then Yo, we're gonna be dead by then though no technically it's supposed to start like 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 now like like this no, is no. Isn't like a hundred years. Really? Because I've had yeah. some things that were like it was like the nineteen something, like the early late nineteen hundreds, and then other ones that are you know, like yeah, twenty one hundred or. Whatever. But either way, uh, I'm, I read I'm my horoscope in, uh, every day. Yeah, I weird. read my horoscope every day. I would know. It says that I'm I'm cool, but I'm collected. I get angry easily, but I'm also calm. <laughs> it's like ah yes, <laughs> it describes me exactly. How do they know? Um, but like okay, so the yeah, so like the you're way like really you're like. What the? Yeah. Yeah, who told me this? <laughs> <laughs> but um, yo, it's like the concept of like um. So yeah, so you have like these constellations. It's like whichever one I guess like my my small brain understanding like rises behind the sun is the or the sun rises in front of is the one where we're like yes that is the current the current period of time. So this this number which is like I, something around like 27,400 and something years or 26,000 something years um is like very is encoded in multiple like parts of the dimensions of the pyramids um i don't know if any of you guys know these any of them off the top of your head but there's like one which is like 54 it's like 54 times 2 um is 108 right and then that number yeah no this would it's, it's the numbers aren't too important i think it's, it's yeah like, it is really important that there are some of these things sort of embedded in the yeah. geometry yeah exactly it's like the the, the most well, important so, part oh yeah really well, quick i was yeah, watching yeah. a uh i clicked on an old vsauce video about spooky coincidences the the north latitude but yeah, the, the latitude of the pyramid aligns with uh, like the speed of light to eight digits or something crazy. Yeah. Um, like the yeah, this, which you know maybe it's coincidence, maybe it's not. But it, I mean, it's, it's just it's, like it is. There's just um, so many it, of these things that are just. All it would be dumb to not mention though that there are other um, monuments around the world that have shown some competency and. Um, you know constructing things that will do weird they'll have weird effects when you get to like a solar eclipse or uh, an equinox yeah, so that's, that's yeah. yeah i mean the it's the next step dude when you start looking at the construction and the particular signature that is left on very um 
choice types of granite um, because it's like they're picky. You know, the, the people that made these structures are picky about the type of rock that they built it with. Um, and the... No malformities. Like, if it doesn't work right, if there's some inconsistency, they just, they, they reject it. Well, not not even rock. that. That's just, like, like, the shape of that stone, but, like, the type of rock. Yeah. Like, like yeah. so the type of granite, like, and all that. Um, the the types of buildings so the signature that's left in these stones and the way that these blocks are conjoined or just like fitted um and the relative pattern that they make up when you they stack them and not because they're so specific because it's not willy-nilly stacking it's not parallel evolution it's exact same construction method um even down to like we can talk about this the they found like these bars, these clamps they called them, that would seal um, onto two big uh, megaliths and like to hold them in place. And um, there was a lot of them have been stripped by now in the last century, but every once in a while someone finds them. But like it's the same type of joint, like metallurgical metallurgical joinery. And uh, but you got anyways, it, you got it. Uh, so these pyramids, the way yeah. that they're built, it's not just Egypt, they you find them in China and in India and Japan, South and America, South, South America. All, 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 oh no, do we lose them in parts of e East of Easter Island? Sorry, did I go? Easter Island. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, good. We, we you're got, parts you're... of Easter Island. Yeah, we got the most. Not, this. right, not all of Easter Island because, uh, like, you see some s funny stacks of stones or whatever, but every once in a while, if you see some basalt, like, hard-ass <laughs> fucking rock, and granite. it's usually the old, they look so old, but when you look at, like, the line with that is made into it, and then the way that they're stacked up, you're like, all right, that's not a chisel that seems like it was done it's, with some proper machining techniques and every dude this is one thing i wanted to actually bring up in the beginning is like everybody talks about oh moving the stones or stacking them who gives a hoot like i don't care if you get your buddies together to like get the mua mua easter island thing and then shimmy it across the, the soil yeah. and you're like look we can move it like okay you moved it like Use another rock and hit it against it until you make the same shape. Right. Like no one's done. No one has done that or is going to because it's not possible. Um. And some I would watch this video of this dude. Like the stone shaping itself is the biggest key, like sig, like tell in my mm. opinion. Um. Especially the casing stones. To yeah. keep the to keep the angle is like the crazy thing. Okay. It is so hard to consistently cut an angle. Can we talk about the casing stones and what what are they? What's their their function? They do what they say. Kind of, like they're kind of what their name implies. Like they what is casing? Uh, case, they encased the uh, rougher building stones used to create like the main structure. Okay. So they, that's what gave it their, I guess, like um, nice. So flat the stones, side shape the, the um, stones that were like that like kind of um covered the pyramids before they were like stripped out later yeah like most of the pyramids are built uh primarily with rectangular blocks right. uh sort of rectangular like pseudo rectangular okay. they got weird angles to them at the ends like it's, it's all crazy dude it's so but, weird yeah. go ahead like some of the casing stones when they fall off or they could mm. sometimes they've been peeled away to be um used for to re be repurposed but the ones that fall off some of them you see they're perfectly straight on the outside but then <laughs> the ones on the inside like they're tapered to the whatever fucking, the blocks are the block was yeah. you know, it's like almost random like it's like a fucking dirty block or stone you picked out in the ground and then did nothing and you just put it there and then like the it's like taking surface. clay, you push it in, and it fills all the, Almost, the crevices. Yeah. 
but then it becomes insanely hard. Yeah. And that would that would be even dude, that's if it's even not less cutting stone, right? if it is concrete and they were able to do this, that's even cooler, dude. I don't that's care how chat, they right? did it. I just <laughs> imagine like, what like it's not chisels. It's not hitting the shit with other No, no, no. Things. So but, like yeah, and what I was in when I was when I brought that up earlier, that was more for finishing because it can be used for uh, finishing purposes in a sense. You can use that with sand and water to almost like sandpaper or something. Uh, it's not going to do much, and it would still like the timeline just doesn't make sense when you consider just how long it would actually take to fucking uh, shape a stone or flatten a stone like that, and then multiply that by. 4,000, I don't know, however many they used, but yeah. it's just ridiculous. So, so now, like, we've kind of decided, and I think, obviously, I agree to that there is just, like, a, like the current theories of the um, pyramids are kind of, like, they feel like nonsense. Um, well, there are people working, like, very sincerely on trying to explain how it could have been done using what was available, and, like, okay. Are there any like, reasonable if, theories? I mean, reasonable. There are theories, but um, I still think it's interesting to look at them or consider what some people offer because, you know. Yeah, of course. There's always, like, nobody knows, so we can't say. Right. We can say that the, the current evidence for the accepted theory is not convincing. That doesn't mean that the accepted, yeah. the accepted theory is wrong. It just means, bro, you have to find a different way to make me believe that you're telling me the truth you know yeah what like what, what i mean is that I, like like okay still wrong no no okay so what i'm trying to say is that like there is a theory <laughs> expressed that this was basically the theory is that it was created okay actually good point so 4500 years ago khufu um made people made people build this pyramid that is the theory, and then there's supporting evidence that is like copper, or whatever, and sand infused with heavy me and hard metals and stuff. And that evidence to support the theory of Khufu creating the pyramid is not convincing to me, um, and I assume to you guys as well. So I'm curious to know, like, are there, what are some of, is there evidence for, for at least another direction that might be more palatable or more likely um and like maybe if i might be leading you here but like is something like the sphinx is that how does that like that play into it no i trust zahi Oas. <laughs> yeah honestly i'm a big egyptologist myself is that the lead egyptologist guy that's like head of customs and all Shit that on you. so actually so yeah actually, so the crazy yeah, thing ahead. right is like there's um, a pretty interesting documentary about. I think he's a French dude, or and he's French. I don't know who he is. No, not oh, the guy you're talking about. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. No, he um, he's an archaeologist, and he's trying to. He's been trying to explain like how it could have been built. And uh, one thing that I thought was interesting is the his concept for using the grant gallery as sort of like a main um i don't want to say ramp because the ramp theory of like how the pyramids are built is kind of i don't know shamed on so but it's interesting right you just think like the grant galleries are really weird looking uh structure it's the angle it's super steep it's kind of narrow it's Okay, awesome. It looks super cool, but you think those are the those are the huge blocks. Those are the big twenty, eighty ton blocks. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's just an interesting thing to consider. I don't really buy it. Um, he, <laughs> they show in the documentary. They show like little animations of people. <laughs> it's like hundreds of people heaving on these massive hemp ropes over yeah. pull, like pulleys, like <laughs> using logs and something out of like it's the just, Moses movie. It's so crazy, like the yeah. Of Egypt yeah, movie. and bro, the Jews were wicked strong. Yeah, <laughs> true, true. I didn't know it was them. Oh, okay, wait. <laughs> bro, <laughs> you had to the tell slaves. me. The slaves. Yeah, the, sla dude. the slaves that were the, uh, the the Jewish people. That's so true. Oh my god. Um, but like, okay. Wait. And they're just all like. 
<laughs> but why would they all just like literally giga chads bro it's just like a line of giga chads like the fucking like that dude with the fucking oh, stone man. jaw just like mm, it... going for it yeah have you ever watched those old um christian animation movies about moses and bro like um, prince of egypt bro you remember prince that movie? of egypt that yeah movie's so you... sick actually i love that movie it's such a great movie but but you remember yeah. when they were all like the the Egyptians with their whips yeah, yeah, and like yeah, the yeah. people on the scaffolding they're like I don't even know dude it's, it's wild ah it's like it's crazy it's like have you ever like had a wheelbarrow and then filled it with dirt and then tried to move that wheelbarrow it's kind you're of like different. god damn this is heavy <clears throat> like, yes the concept of weight a wheel. <laughs> that's with a wheel yeah that's that's yeah. that's with access of a wheel a lever and um okay how do you feel about the strongman competitions where you have these just juice heads like what if the egyptians mastered steroids yeah (laughs) yeah nobody (laughs) brings that up they're all just on like human growth hormone and trt bro that would be fucking (laughs) juiced like absolutely jacked out of their minds Emo types just like Schwarzenegger'd out, like, yeah. just like the baby. Got this. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, slaves, the slaves were fed needles for their lunch. They were fed needles and, in, in, um, in just fucking, straight tea. Yeah, yeah, tea and then, and then HGH. Like a raw leg from an animal. Yeah, a, co- a cocktail of stem, of stem cells and, and fucking straight um, bull testicles. Actually, yeah, actually, a big problem with them was diabetes. Um, fun fact is they eat a lot cane? of bet, a lot of bread. They would eat a lot of bread and um, like forget what else. But no, uh, yeah, over the years they developed a serious problem. There was like um, they found that in some of the mummies' remains and stuff like that. Yeah. Better. Um, I want to ask a question. You could see the pictures of some Middle Kingdom's tummies. Oh, they have a little because they just eat bread all the time. Yes. Anyways, so the, yeah, the ones of sooner. Of right. like only three or four thousand, five thousand years ago, whatever. Sorry. You're good, you're good. I want to ask a question. So okay, so we've kind of thoroughly um, we've examined. I don't know. I'm not gonna say thoroughly. But we've examined the, the 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 case of Egypt as it is built with the pyramids built four thousand five hundred years ago. But I'm I want to know more about you know before we can start to kind of use this as like a lever to get into some of these other topics. But there is this concept of the the Sphinx in Egypt, and like the Sphinx is an interesting it's real. thing. It's not just a concept. Oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah, it's, okay. Okay. No, no, okay. No, no, keep point, going. Sorry. It's a concrete. My, it's a concrete I'm thing stupid. that exists. I was stupid. You're stupid. Right. No, I mean, sorry, I'm stupid. <laughs> I mean, no, he's stupid. No, okay. So the concept. concept. Yeah, yeah. You, 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 you. I'm a goofy but... goober. Yeah. <laughs> You're a goofy goober, yeah. So, so, okay, see so We're I'm... all goofies. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's here to bring you Goofy, 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 goober. Oh, you thought we were done? Bro, check check your watch, bro. What hour are you on? What, what, what time is it over there, bro? Mr. <laughs> oh, I, I thought I had time. Um, okay, so, yeah, Sphinx. I, I mean, People, I point. People. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. Um, People. No, that was a line in the movie. Which movie? The SpongeBob SpongeBob movie. Bro, I don't know any SpongeBob movies. Why would I know that shit? <laughs> bro, bro, did you grow up in America? Bro, all I had was PBS Kids, bro. I was watching like the fucking uh, Ken Burns Civil War documentary as like an eight year old. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I'm, I'm a sorry, man. Human being. Yeah, it, it was. I hard. was just making a cartoon reference, and I and I didn't get it. Unfortunately, I'm gonna get roasted on the internet. It's okay. It happens. It happens. No, no. Um, I'm making an ass of myself. <laughs> bro, this, this, this dude's this, such a... This, no, it's a good movie. You should check it out, honestly. It's a Don't good, watch any up. of the other Spongebob movies. Watch that one, though. Bro, I watch watched, the first one. I watched, it's a good... It's a... Plot-wise, bro. Yeah. The writing? The writing? I, solid. Solid. Dude, it's... Overall, good. morally, it teaches you a oh. lesson. Yeah. It's such a good movie. Actually, yeah. I don't know if you watch... <laughs> Yeah, fuck it. I'm, I'm yeah, like, let's just pull it up right now. <laughs> fuck it. Uh, <laughs> but no. It's anyway. Good anyway. 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 Wait. Okay. So. Actually, I want to share one thing. This is. Ten you wanted to talk about. The, you, you wanted to talk about the the the. the yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I will say that I watched like one episode, um, of SpongeBob where he goes to like this weird ass like under, it's, like this area that's outside of town, like, and there's like 
it's like a I don't know what the name of the episode was, but it's like out of town and it's like a straight drop down. I don't know if you remember that episode, but that episode fucking traumatized me, bro. I understand. That episode up. actually traumatized me, bro, and made it so I, like, couldn't deal with... Because like, I think I, I got on, like, a DVD that had, like, Spongebob and some other TV shows on it. Like, a Cartoon Network, like, best of t- DVD. And that that episode of Spongebob Damn. actually fucked me up. Because it just felt like I was... I don't know, some weird thing about be- feeling abandoned or some shit. I have trauma to, I have trauma to work through. <laughs> anyway, uh... <laughs> So uh, you stare long enough at, into the abyss, the scary. abyss does back. <laughs> yeah, so that was a good time. Right. Okay. Anyway, okay, Oops. so okay, so so okay, okay. Everybody, shut the fuck up for a second. I'm gonna talk for a moment. Um, Shutting up. The Sphinx. <laughs> 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 we, we have a lot of shit to cover here. You know what I'm saying? Okay, yeah. What about uh, so Your Sphinx. Dog. I'm a dog. Yeah, it's a dog. dog. You're a dog. I got that dog in me. Uh, the Sphinx. I'm gonna keep saying the Sphinx until there's a cat. Someone wants me speak more. It's a cat, man. It's actually, in fact, it's it's a a a lion. In fact, with a head of a human. But there's an interesting concept where the head is is much is proportionally much smaller than the rest of the body. Disproportionate. Is 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 disproportionate to the body. So like, in in that like. What you guys? What are the accepted theories for that? Like as like a, a thing. What are the accepted theories? And then also we can also then get into what seems to be more likely given the m- newer, more credible evidence. Uh. Well, I mean, you gotta first think about like the state that the Sphinx was in, um, for this whole time. It was like. We're losing you. We're losing you, kid. Restart. You were saying it was buried, though, right? Like it was yeah. buried. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so it comes and that's, that's 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 an interesting part of it, right? The weathering pattern. That's like one of the main things people point to. So what was the the initial thing is that they were like, oh, this was like a like a sand and wind erosion, right? That that caused the erosion patterns that come up on the part of the Sphinx that was above the being buried right um i might be wrong yes and no no yes and no um, no and yes there's like <clears throat> there's like there's both conjecture that like someone shot a cannon onto the face and then um somewhat like parts of it were more eroded because it was sticking out above the sand. <laughs> Somebody um, shot it in the face. Yeah, like I, yeah. Uh, I, I don't think I heard that. De- defacement. Wait, what? Yeah. A lot. Of, there's but there was legitimate defacement of a lot of anything. Really? Okay, dude. This is a cool thing. Um, if you uh look at some historical records of like um uh like the conquistadors or um certain. Uh, uh, missionary uh, expeditions they when they would come across like sculptures that would have like say penises or like um, tits or something like that they would like break them off because they're like it's how indecent. dare you <laughs> like indecency devil Damn. I don't know and, uh, <laughs> and, they would, and it would they would also do that to sculptures of humans that didn't look ethnically aligned with the people that stumbled across them and so they would just like defile them and i mean you get it's like literally like people talk about whitewashing but it's like they literally just blew shit up or like like they did that like the spanish did that or the portuguese yeah fucking portuguese bitches uh, (laughs) they uh they um they would, yeah, they would like blow shit up, like to, all to the conform stuff, especially because there's like the whole selection of like like Nubian um, pharaohs and all these different like things that are that are more like s- sculptures and statues that are more in line with like a sub-Saharan African set of features. And yeah, like those um, ones don't look like the classic like Egyptian like Ptolemaic. Like kind of influence between the Mediterranean that you expect from Egyptian pharaohs. 
Yeah. And like you people today even debate the you know the ethnicity or the look of the Olmec people who uh look were in like Central America America who look very much like, like uh, <laughs> yeah, like African, like straight up. This like is, you look at it, like is this these the homies like hello? Like, is uh, yeah. Like, is, is this a brother? <laughs> Yeah, no. Yeah, is, is this, this a, a brother? Is that funny? <laughs> is this a... <laughs> My Israelites. <laughs> oh, but seriously, they look, yeah, like they and... like they have like those some very classic African features that just you don't see in other in other Native American groups, and you don't see them in European. Oh yeah, and it's curious. And it's what's even cooler is like uh, the amount of disrespect we give to that people that we encountered as Western civilization moved into the Americas, the Incas and the Mayans and the Aztecs, they all when in discussion or like to their own history, their own history, the ones that they tell themselves and their children, they're like, we don't know who built this shit. This came out way before us. Yeah. Like they are. And then we're just using this place. And then, and, we and, no. then and we're like, you fucking liars what yeah you did this they're like what, what no no it was it was some no it was you you did this and yeah it's interesting because it's like really even, even in egypt right it's like earlier the egyptians walked have... into God's so so i'm sorry i just have to make this point yeah, they, go for the it. aztecs said they just walked and stumbled upon quetzalcoatl the big oh, sun wow. pyramid I didn't know that. They do, they said, oh, it was built for us, and it by destiny we it's ours because we found it. Anyway, let's cut. This shit was off. uninhabited. It. W- Anyways. Yeah, let's, that's. Let's cut some I guess I've, as, To me, like I've always known of those structures, and when you look at them, those are you look at those and you're like, oh yeah, people could build these. Like, this is just a a really well put together uh, project. Um, still, like there's, I, I don't I'm not as familiar with. Um, like Aztec uh, architecture, but uh, from what I do remember seeing, it was like way more manageable in size. Like the scale was much more, I guess, plausible for you to be like, oh yeah, I could see a civilized community coming together for many a years to build this. Um, maybe that's an oversight. I don't know. Uh, you look like look you don't believe it. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, some of them, yeah, for sure. Like so they did a proper job of trying to remake what it would have looked like and you can see <clears throat> their attempt con- at construction and the remnant legacy works that were like they found mm. there's a distinction okay. between their abilities or the and it just doesn't make sense that they would use the, you know what i mean like once you start seeing the sophistication difference between how they crafted some of this stuff and yeah but they were they were super um respectful of, of it like they tried to remake the pyramids into the shapes that they were and they had like ceremonies that they thought the sun wanted you know with like ver- really pretty Just killing a bunch of people and ripping their the organs yeah. Yeah. yeah a lot of dissections like, <laughs> yeah and a lot of dissection crazy yeah, shit take but, some uh, mushrooms and do some dissecting <laughs> It was a wild, dude. I okay. There's a, small oh, side. This is a, this is a small side because we'll get back to construction. Um, there was a ceremony. I think it was the axe. Where was it? The Mayans. It's so disrespectful too to confuse these civilizations because they're all like. Yeah, I'm trying to be very careful. <laughs> completely different time frames. But I think it was either the Aztecs or the Mayans. Um, but they had. <laughs> They had a um, a rite or a, a ceremony mm-hmm. every year uh, or a few years. I think it was yearly. I think it was tied with um, seasons because it okay. was for their crops to grow. And then what they would do is they would get like an uns- <laughs> they would get a virgin. They would get a virgin gal, um, but the prettiest. Like she had to be the prettiest the, the fucking baddest, girl, the, the baddest literally the baddest town. bitch in town. Right. They had to, they had to give up, and she had to be of an age or whatever. And I, and I just, I'm just thinking, <laughs> I'm like, what about the say, fathers, the fathers, they're they're like, yo, uh, 
your daughter's looking real <laughs> nice. <laughs> and the other one's like, gotta, your gotta daughter's read. looking real <laughs> <laughs> nice. Some dude is like, thank God, my daughter's He's ugly like, no, as fuck. My, my, my daughter's <laughs> ugly. ugly. It's just, it's damn. Like you. My daughter's literally hideous. Why do you think I come out? <laughs> hey, hey, Why babe, do you think I don't... chose Eleanor? Honey, honey. So, wait, so what do they do? They oh. just sacrifice the, the, hottest, the hottest girl in, in, in all the land? Yeah, they would drug her up with like mushrooms and coke and shit Lives. like that. And like different drinks and they would um would throw her off of something or whatever just throw her. Damn, you were very callous with that last bit you know <laughs> like, isn't it funny <laughs> that they killed the, the prettiest girl <laughs> but i just so it's like <laughs> your daughter like, <laughs> have some my daughter my daughter is so fucking ugly my wife <laughs> um <laughs> such a bad thought. i love her so it's much like, honey don't don't shower for the next month Bro, yeah, like, never cut your hair. Like, I need you looking <laughs> frumpy. I need you looking crazy. Yeah. Because hey, there's a bunch of mud out. outside. Can you go dig a hole, please? Imagine the girl who, like, glows up. Like, she's, like, she starts out looking ugly. So she's, like, oh, fine. I'm not going to get put down. And then, like, but then, like, she has a glow <laughs> up and, and, get, and gets mad hot. And they're, like, oh, shit. She's, like, no. Oh, it's, not, it's not as nice as being put down. That's being sacrificed. <laughs> being put down is the nicest way you could possibly put it. Like it's some euthanasia. No, it was very much. Like she was, we're she gonna was let go. <laughs> he, he just some on. dude lined up. Cause they all You're gonna lay down up, on a like, stone, and some guy with really sharp nails is gonna whip heart. into your chest. Oh like, God. yeah. No, they have like a ceremonial knife, and they'll just yeah, they all slice your shit. But up. imagine the congregation. There's just one dude. He's like, damn, dude, why are we doing this? <laughs> It was so fucked up. Wait, I remember watching a documentary like, at, on this. Like, shit. Like, As they would just rip out organs. Like, what a fucked up people. Like, yeah, like, this is what you want, God. Like, <laughs> here you go. <laughs> it was so fucking crazy. Their relation with their God they were in it, and the idea was like they were having legit conversations with them because they were using drugs out the wahoo. Hell and, like, yeah. Communicating, not like just like faith, like leap of faith type of shit. Like, yeah. I believe, and then there's nothing to verify you, and that's what faith is. It's like I believe, and then there's just like psychedelic de- <laughs> yeah, whatever entity. Like, oh, and he's like, give me the hottest lady. Psychic <laughs> war god that you like you think of because you're absolutely <laughs> blasted on the on the most premium of substances. Well, they would do that to so many other slaves too, right? They would just like line the slaves up and just fuck it. Yeah, just there would be by days one. right where they would have like put 70, them on the pedestal. They have like yeah. fifty thousand people on like a. Uh, 50,000 people from like uh, the, from a war campaign and then they would just they would just line the whole the whole squad up and spend the whole day just 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 taking people out cutting out hearts and over and them. over just over just make a line so you'd have a line up the pyramid and then you'd have bodies tumbling down the pyramid and it's just like oh you're in line like it's like you're, you're waiting like, at the DMV you're just like hey that guy cut <laughs> it's like you literally hey that's supposed to be up there it's like you're waiting at the DMV to get put down to get to get passed forward, to get sent to the great beyond, and then you just get you just get cooked. Just so, like one dude in line is like, "Was this always? When did we start doing this?" <laughs> He's like, what? "Yeah, why am I here? Like, what, what what decisions did I make that's led me to literally walking up like I'm at the DMV, but instead I'm actually just gonna get my heart cut out? Like, what kind of what kind of shenanigans is that? Um, that, that's ridiculous." Yeah, I think. Um, so, yeah. I don't know how we got here, but the Sphinx. Oh, oh <laughs> right. Sphinx. Yeah, dude. I mean, okay. So the only thing I actually care about it points at it points at the uh, is that this constellation. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. So there we go. So there's like this concept of the Sphinx and how the like the, there was an initial as like thought that the Sphinx was was um it would the face was weathered as a result of sand and wind but then one robert shock from boston university along with another dude i forget his first name but i think his name was like something mccarthy right um he was mccarthy talked to robert shock and was like yo can you help me can you come to egypt with me i'm trying to understand what's going on with this this sphinx so so the boys the boys take a trip you know what i'm saying they they, they call they do their pto they, they submit their requests and then you know they get their reimbursements they're on their way because they don't get their reimbursements that's after 
They get to Egypt, and Robert Schock, a geologist, a PhD holding geologist, looks at this, this geophysicist. Sphinx. Geophysicist looks at this Sphinx. I've actually talked to this dude before, which is wild. Um, but looks nice. looks at, but not about. I didn't know about this at the time. It was for some other project I was supposed to be doing. Just for some other. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I didn't know he was just a G. I, how could I have known? How could I have known? But um, anyway, so this dude and Robert Shock, they pull up, and Robert Shock's, oh, this is light work. This is literally light work. That is that is caused by heavy rainfall. Okay. Heavy rainfall is an interesting thing. In many places on Earth, heavy rainfall is like, oh, yeah, it rains a lot in places. But we're talking about Egypt in the middle of the Saharan Desert. When has there been heavy rainfall, especially during the period estimated, which is supposed to be in line with the Great Pyramids, right? So something around 4000 BC, correct? How could that be connected to, to rainfall? Um, just like we just said, all the blood that they let from all those virgins. Oh, for yeah. Hundreds is the, is the of thousands of years. No. Just, every day blood, they just come dude, up and ring, all... and ring a, ba a bad bee, ring no. a, a, a model over the, over the pyramids. That sounds it was really at least though. torrential water, like a stream. So like, they don't know, like okay, they don't know if it was, like, was specifically rainfall, but just a lot of water hit, like moving over this this uh, object, yeah, um, over a, uh, over a long period of time. Yeah, definitely and, not wind. Right. So now come let's let's bring in some climate science as well. What is where is the what is the time period? I actually don't know it off the top of my head that like corresponds to like that to, to the, the possibility of rain in the in in the Sahara Desert should I call somebody I mean this is yeah I mean yeah. It, history gives me aneurysms. <laughs> okay so what so we have an accepted timeline of like what four thousand some change bc oh, he, 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 oh he's back okay and then we have an, a longer timeline or we have like an estimation of what what is it like is it is it eleven thousand years is it like nine thousand years nine thousand bc or eleven thousand bc yes when know? that much water was... yeah when it was possible for this erosion to have taken place on the sphinx well so we know in the times around Cleopatra, I think, was it above ground? Was it not covered in sand then? I think because if it was just <sighs> um, sure. yeah, that's actually something I don't know that Let's off see. the top of my head. Because there seems I remember hearing something about a dearth of um, mentioning a dearth, uh, of uh, an absence of lack of dearth. D E A R T H. Okay. Um, like uh, of its mention in certain historical records, like I, it got covered at some point, but okay, I don't. Okay, so it was. It said okay, so it, apparently at, at the very least, it's been unco it was uncovered during the reign of Emperor Nero. Um, Nero. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Who? When is? When was he about? He was. Uh, what was his time? Someone in, sorry, not to cut in, but someone in the chat said that you are, um, your mic is ASMR. You, you, you're, gonna, you're, uh, you're soothing the listeners. Anyway, carry on as you were. Huh? Never mind, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I'm saying, uh, uh, <laughs> he asked if he has an ASMR mic. Oh. Uh, yeah. Oh. Okay. Which I guess you would have to watch ASMR to to know what that is. Anyway. Yeah. What? Which one of us? I, I assume he's talking to. Um, he's listening without audio too. So. No, I think his. <laughs> I think his thing is just broken. I think it, I think he can hear us. Oh. Uh, okay. 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 He says he did. He's never watched ASMR. Okay. 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 Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I had a rule that I wasn't. Yeah. But I had a rule I wasn't gonna look at the chat. But you know, I felt like I had to acknowledge my guy. No. Um, what? Just so, so we so. can stay focused. Oh, yeah, like that's a bit, that's a bit bad. Well, uh, speaking of staying focused, Kevin Lee just kind of died. Kevin Lee? Like, I knew it, dude. Dude, that guy brutalized, um, what's his face? Uh, Brian Battle last time. Oh, really? I like Brian Yeah. Battle. 
Battle's only loss was to that Sh Shavkat. Me not. Fuck, 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 fuck. Did that off. Yeah, that guy is a menace, man. He looks like. Yeah. When you say just died, you mean just lost? Yeah, he got like oh. damn near knocked out and then choked out really quick yeah, in the first round. <laughs> okay, I, thought I was just like, wait, what are we talking about? Here? Oh, no. Here. Anyway, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Recipes that hey, stay yeah. focused, Caden. <laughs> yeah. Are you wins. streaming this for the fight right now? <laughs> hey, no, he's got UFC you on the other monitor. Uh, wait, yeah, wait, wait, wait. Right. You think Strickland's going to win or what? Nope. He's facing uh, a Mago meta. He's, he's going to lose by submission. Or he's he's going to lose by submission. Or decision. I don't know, though. I'm, I'm kind of on a... Strickland can pull stuff out of nowhere, dude. Even though he's... I don't like want him to lose. He he has such a cool, like funny like every man's way of fighting. He's like doesn't care type. Anyways, anyways, we're talking about the Sphinx, okay. dude, and water. So and rocks. it's been uncovered before. So there's many times over over the history between when it was um uh, um uh what's it called theoretically built in the fourth whatever whatever dynasty four thousand BC until now it's been uncovered multiple times. So people knew that it existed. Um. So, but there is this concept of, of water based erosion that apparently needs to have happened something like what is it, 11,000 or 12,000 years ago? I guess maybe let me, let me, yeah, do the young in the ballpark. Guys. Uh, 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 <laughs> don't, don't get them started. Okay, we're gonna, we're, we're about, we're almost there. <laughs> so, let's, let's find out when the Sphinx, Sphinx water erosion. Let's see if there's like a there's an S okay, it says um that there was uh a this this ero water erosion. It says it's a fringe claim. Um <laughs> thank you, Wikipedia. Very yeah, cool. Yeah, dude. But uh dude. it says eleven thousand five hundred years ago. That's that's what it says. That uh it's talking it, it also talks about Atlantis. I'm ignoring that part. But there's a concept of a lot of flooding that happened when like scientifically in the area 11,500 years ago. So if water erosion had happened, it had to have happened during that period. You know what? Uh, another thing about flooding at that time is that it wasn't just that area. <laughs> like, <laughs> that, the oceans rose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. So, well, yeah, okay, okay, so there's like a it's... concept of the whole planet flooded, apparently. But. Some people. Yeah. That's Some an important thing. Like, like everybody, everybody, like even like I was actually one day I was asking my dad about like what are the Yoruba, which is like my tribe in Nigeria. What is our like creation myth? And our creation myth is like there was like a reed. There was like a like the whole earth flooded and then there was like a reed. Like a little bit of land with some reeds on it that like our proto ancestors, like some god beings came. They they found this piece of land in the covered in the ocean. They landed there. And then they created human beings who then started, like, and that area is called Ife. It's like, it's like the ancestral home of, of the Yoruba people, which is, I actually want to visit, bro. I haven't, I've been That'd there be before, cool. but I haven't been there in a minute because I'm poor and my parents don't want to pay for my ticket to Nigeria, which is understandable. I'm now an hitchhike. adult. Yeah, right? A hitchhike, get kidnapped, end up in the, in the, in the fucking Boko Haram. <laughs> I become a, become a Islamic extremist. Um. But yeah, so it's like that, even there, like I didn't talk to my dad about like, oh, maybe there's this concept of of flooding. No, I was just like, yo, what are, do you remember that your grandmother, because our grandma was like super into like pagan religions or just like, you know, cultural, cultural religion, which is just the religion of the Yoruba people. And like, she told him like the story and everybody understands the story of flooding being the, the, the first part of, of the progenesis of people. So, the that's... progenesis of like so many cultures, dude. Yeah. The I chance, exact of course, same. Just vibes. The exact same, bro. It's like so crazy that it's. It's not crazy anymore, bro. It kind of like, makes sense, though, right? If you think about it, like even, just taking it from your a cultural area, perspective. You know, we'll think like if you were built up in an area, you spend a lot of resources, time building infrastructure, whatever have you. And then, and say you're like super religious of a people, um, you do all these things 
to supposedly like make your gods happy and then you get struck with like a crazy uh natural disaster i'd probably want to move out of that area i don't know i'd be like hey i don't want to fucking stay here like what if that happens again like to me that would be i think it's like even just yeah i mean that's interesting but i think it's also like the concept of this like event that's like you know on a biblical scale where things are happening that are so violent and extreme that there's nowhere to run it's like oh you you wake up three days later and you're like, oh, I'm still alive. Okay. Uh, society or sorry, the our, our current situation is insane. Like, if so, humans have existed for we can accept that like modern anatomically modern humans have existed for between like what two or three hundred thousand years and accepted like no one would argue at the two hundred thousand years, but there's like a whole well. It's been maybe way way longer than that. But I don't know then, anything about that kind of stuff, to be honest. But, fair. but I think 200,000 is like a pretty straightforward number, not like one that's like based on new information, which would be much later or much earlier. Um, but I would say it could be even more than that. It'd be yeah, like exactly. 300. But I'm, I'm even just saying just to be generous to 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 the. To, yeah. Is, is that like then it's like, OK, if there's an accepted for some reason, a period of, of, of flooding that happens something between like 11,500 and 12,500 years ago then you can be like okay that sounds like human beings lived through these crazy events that happened um and then it's like how does that impact culture because when these crazy things happen say for the sake of my argument right now say uh, some communities did that. They had a natural disaster strike, and they're like, let's get the fuck out of here. And then when they move, now they are bringing their culture and all of that with them to a new place in which for either they can either meet new people to sort of develop another... Yeah, so culture. I don't know, I feel bad I keep saying culture. But, that's you know, the word for it. I mean, that's what it is. It's, it's, it's the expansion and sort of branching out, right? Because, like, once you say, like, those natural disasters happen, you obviously lose a lot. And so when you try to recreate something, it's going to be some sort of, like, hybrid version. It's not going to be the OG stuff. Yeah, dude. Uh, okay. You guys, have you guys heard of the Peshtigo fires? Mm-mm. Um. So right around the time of the Chicago fires of nineteen oh four, or the eighteen nineties. Anyways, around nineteen hundred, there was the big Chicago burn down or whatever. Um, and uh, at the same time, up in Peshtigo, which is like a hundred miles north, um, on the Wisconsin border of lake michigan uh the uh, <laughs> the fucking atmosphere lit on fire and what the he, the people like the first-hand accounts said like i mean it, it, all of a sudden the air was like ha, was like a thicker basically like they almost got like baked and like the there's a massive like front of heat and like uh flame that just like devoured like whole like it just eviscerated whole swaths of lands and shit like that and they think i mean it happened so fast that they think it could have been like something like um like a very small meteor or something like that but um like just burning up in the atmosphere and then like the wave of heat just like fucking just, just like bulldoze like what in its scale seemed like a small area but to us was like the entire air was on fire mm-hmm. for briefly like oh, everything was seized up God. right well not even that yeah so trying to Be explain to your kids as kids that literal fire that maybe you could have a campfire of or barely get started Tell them that that shit was multiplied by millions, and get, get like 
<laughs> like, yeah, like the atmosphere. Like, it feels like the atmosphere has ignited, and like something so beyond what you understand as your day to day life has taken place. And then, because of the sudden destruction of your general society, you maybe don't have the tools to show them what happened before in any way that a normal person's day to day life could expect, like understand. Like even just hypothetically imagining. Yeah, like ten thousand years ago, like say, like yeah, like human beings lived through like the the asteroid that hit in the Yucatan Peninsula or something like that. Like the way that that your life suddenly changes, and if any of you survive, then what you what like what access do you have to reasonable like you can't? There's nothing left to record anything. There's nothing left to to be like yo I I I I. I I created a video of this happening. Like, and then the time it will take even, okay, so the time it takes then for you to get back to a point at which you can start to record things again, or if you did write something down, how long it is before maybe somebody will find it, or it can be, like, put back into some sort of general memory of, like, like physical, like, storage or whatever it's so long that these your ideas begin to break down and change form at the very least and like i feel like that's like a big uh a big, um yeah the loss of know-how there's a book it's like the cultural evolution Fuck me. um there a new idea came out. It's just like how culture and our technology is um, influencing our evolutionary and like natural selection, and then and our you know the, our makeup and stuff like that is necessarily linked to like the abilities that we've cultivated over time. So it's like a, a back and forth. Um, we've in uh, and uh, um. Holy shit, dude. Uh, there's a group is uh, Inuit adjacent. They're living around Newfoundland or something like that. Um, and these ex explorers from... Uh, it was either England or like the Netherlands or something like that. They came over and like found them. And they, these people, it was really cool. Like they had the... They were living off of uh you know um pretty much just whales and seals and stuff like that and they but they had this like device uh, let's say it was like a certain um sculpting of a particular bone of a seal that they used to both carve stuff out with ice but also like holster stuff i don't know it was a, a unintuitive uh, um, shaping of this particular bone that was like had some function mm -hmm. and these explorers came and they met the Inuit and they hung out with them documented oh I don't know whatever and then they left and then <laughs> a few decades later or no no yeah no more than just a few decades later I think it was like 60 maybe years or something but they came back, and there, it turns out that the explorers had, like, the flu or whatever, harbored it, and basically killed these this um, entire village, except for, like, maybe, like, three or four families extended. So they forgot how to use this. They just couldn't come up with the uh, memory or, like, remember how to make this particular tool. And they were reduced to nothing, like they were bare, they were all they were like disease they were diseased and stuff like that. And basically, like it was only until another tribe that was like, um, you know, uh, canoeing throughout the islands or whatever, and they stumbled across them. And then this other indigenous group taught them like their particular method of like Using a similar the same tool tool yeah same similar bone or whatever but ba like it took one gen one one generation to it's like one like, event yeah 
one event for them to just be put to to be it knocked uh, back into like basically humility. ignorant teed yeah wow, that was <laughs> a word can you spell use that in the yeah. sentence uh dude like and so <laughs> i mean i'm like it makes me nervous and you know about like stuff like what do i know like how would it yeah how quick how like, easily would society like would the secession of society leave you like absolutely done yeah like, how oh. quickly would you be eaten by a bear and or a deer honestly. or other people or just other a deer people. imagine you're just walking in the forest trying to survive and you trip and fall on something knock yourself out you wake up and like there's just a family of deer eating you you didn't even get yeah, killed. You just have to get eaten by a deer. That's good. Deers are herbivores. Yeah. They eat. Yeah, they eat uh, animals too, uh, as well. Oh, they no. eat snakes, dude. Oh, no. They eat snakes. Yeah, it's kind of wild. So they're they're have video. Video. They be out here. Shit, dude, if they can, they'll get to them. <laughs> Obviously, they're not good at um, killing shit. Or you just get a cut and then slowly infected. And you don't even and and like like bro. Like obviously I have like a I'm obviously I was in Boy Scouts and all these things so I have like a, a good amount of survival emergency yeah, prepared. Obviously. I can tell. Shut up, idiot. I have a bunch of. Across. I have like <laughs> fuck you. I have like emergency <laughs> preparedness skills, not tying all this stuff that like normal people just have they just don't interact with. Like if you ask like any person what to do if someone cuts themselves like seriously most people just haven't the yeah, foggiest okay. clue like literally they might be able to pull some knowledge from some stupid ass movie they watched and then get it wrong and die anyway but like you they couldn't even tell you much about it and so it's like yeah how easily does one return to cavemen like i think it's like it could be instantaneous like I, I think it's within a generation or with within that generation that something traumatic happens if the stress is high enough for long enough that like that's it you're already there you know, you're already there because it's just things are so crazy because like, yeah, if something like an a, a asteroid hits the planet right now as we're talking, it's like how much like maybe a month and people are like just going going absolutely insane and, and just like relying on their most base instincts of survival. Like, yeah, it would be probably that that easy. Um, but I mean, yeah. Okay. In person, I'm trying to be like, I'm trying to get hit right in the forehead by the asteroid. It comes down like this. <laughs> Bonk. Get cooked. Dude, I mean, in the context of Egyptology, <laughs> in, the co- in the context of Egyptology, it just makes a lot of sense, right? To say, like, and I think, yeah, now and there's more and more attention being brought to the possibility of there being this massive flood. Yeah. Um, it, it's, which yeah it's super interesting okay so like, it's really i mean there's a f- yeah i mean what's up with this flood not though just the possibility man just like, the possibility of it right? it would explain it help explain a lot well yeah it would help yeah, it yeah. would help like qualm a lot of uh i guess concern that there is no explanation for for what happened or like why we lost right so well there's time. also not according to this sort of old lens that we're shedding the the like <laughs> you have to also consider all of the megafauna that disappeared there's no uh, i mean the overhunting hypothesis <laughs> is wild i mean you think about it and it's like yeah okay yeah we the clovis people came in and murdered all the hairy elephants it's like what about the sh- the sloths and the wolves and the bears and uh, the X Y Z hor- big ass horses all they're mammalian dinosaurs. They're so big, dude. They're bigger than tractors. These sloths. Uh, uh, have yeah. you? I mean, they're bigger than tractors. You know, uh, sloths. Massive creatures. So they use spears to just put them all down. Somehow Wasn't kill them at such be- a rate. Just kill them in such a rate that like they didn't even they just killed them and left them to die for vibes. They killed the ultimate predators and their prey and all the everything bigger pretty much than people like uh, whether uh, if you look at the uh, uh, biodiversity of megafauna and the uh, like all this all the different types it's like we were living 
in a dinosaur. We were living on in Jurassic Park right. up like until the, the Younger Dryas. Like the short. Okay. So there, with like things like the short nosed bear, the saber toothed tiger, the woolly mammoth. There's camels. There's big ass horses. There's it's like a giant um, sloth. Random yeah, sloths, and uh, the all super sized, all crazy big, and like uh, it just doesn't make sense. Like you would have to be incredibly industrious. To be like, I'm going. We're gonna. Yeah, we're gonna. We're gonna genocide these animals. We're gonna cease their There's, existence. Like, how much meat can you eat? Like that. There have to be a surge of people. Like the you know, abundance. I mean, one mammoth supplies an entire like a hundred something people for like a year yeah. or more. So like, so dude in the chat like, says like, how how do you kill first and then leave to die? How does that work? And it's like, apparently. There's this concept of people just like taking them all and like what driving them off cliffs or like just just trying to systematically murder everybody, <laughs> which is just like what? what, dude? That's like one of the first Arctic expeditions. Some of the dudes had never seen penguins before, and they were like, they would do the exact same thing with these penguins. <laughs> <laughs> they would like herd them off and like push them off. Yeah, the yeah, for, like that, for, for like that movie. There's like a movie where they did that. They like just they pushed a bunch of these like animals because they wanted to create like this documentary that said they like to kill themselves. So they forced them all to go flying off of a cliff. It's pretty fucked up. Um, so yeah, something so such a projection. Dude, um, Abdul like... just said uh, said, "Yo, uh, Jacob, do you remember me from BU? Remember that dude? Abdul. Uh, yeah, he's like a he's like a tall black dude." He, we, um, he's lying. was he, he younger than us? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, was he in West Campus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I remember Abdul. Hell yeah! I have such a <laughs> Dude, <I'm sorry. laughs> bad randomness. <laughs> so, so sorry. there's that. No, you're good. I, you're I'm so I'm bad blue. with names, man. Bro, I'm terrible. <laughs> I only know people by their faces. Once I've like, if I see your face, I'll know, it, bro. I'll be like, what's up? Bro, but, don't let me sorry, put that to the cool. test, bro. <laughs> no, I'm joking. But, um, yeah, yeah, let's add to the call. Um, what was I gonna say? Um, so I think that uh, something interesting. Okay, so let's let's go through it, bro. So we're saying that you know the people are saying that there was a there was a flood. You know, our our ancestors are like, you know, Zeus came down, or or like this, like a bird came down and found land, and all these different things. To, to even in Egypt, like there's a lot of mythology around sending out birds and they coming back with, uh, with you know, sending out birds and them coming back to find land. Or in, in um, actually, I guess in Christianity or uh, the Abrahamic religions, there's a concept which is interesting because I would say, I wonder if there's other religions <laughs> where the, <laughs> the <laughs> you're good, you're good. You got there. <laughs> Where the where the flood happens in the middle, you know. I, usually the flood starts the story, but in the Abrahamic religion, it happens like in the in the middle, right? Like, no, it's in Genesis. I'm pretty sure. No, no, the flood with Noah, my guy. That's in Genesis. Yeah. What? Is it really? Pretty sure. Genesis still, includes a lot of stuff. But it still doesn't start the story. Like human beings pull, pop up. They're they're in some cities. They're wild. Right. 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 Things are taking place, and then Pete and then God's like, "Y'all are not as chill as I thought you'd be. I think I want to reset." Are so, y'all fucking each other in the in the in the, in the <laughs> you do a booty? Yo, happy oh shit, Pride Month's over. Never mind. Boom, just fucking wreck. <laughs> Come down with the, with the people's elbow. Like we, we, we do not appreciate, we do not appreciate any free love on this planet. <gasps> oh, bro. Comes bro, down he's a, in, in one shots. I am a judge. Was was he say I am a jealous god? Yeah, where? <laughs> anyway, let's not get into that. <laughs> I'm gonna get. Yeah, let's not get into Nobody that. Nobody ever asked me. About <laughs> uh, imagine getting burned for saying the same thing 600 years ago. Just get put on a cross. Nah, yeah, dude. Literally like stoned to death. It sucks to suck. Honestly, that's a skill issue, bro. You should have. You should have blasted yeah, more just like... funnily. More humorous. They're like small stones too, and they're like they throw ah, them like kind of ah, soft, ah, and you're like. Ow, ow, stop. Ah, fucking stop. It's like just like 12 hours. hours. Ah. 
Sorry. Eventually, they just give up and you survive. They're you're like, dying. Death. Oh, you're supposed to be stoned to death. You're, you're like, dying. no, I got bored to death. Turns out you, you just have severe brain trauma. <laughs> CTE. Yeah, you get CTE from, like, really small, like, hits to the head. Like, uh, uh, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Okay. Go around your neighborhood and hide all the big 40 years later, stones. you're pulling your teeth out and gluing them back in. You're like, what happened? Oh, I got stoned 40 years ago. Um, anyway. Um, so, floods. So, we Clothing. have a flood. Clothing we say that there's... Yeah. Everyone's like, yo, it flooded. So, what, what, is, what are the theories for this flood? We have some mainstream theories, and then we have some... Range theories or just other theories that are potentially possible. Can you, can you give us one, Jacob? Well, a theory that's currently explain... accepted. What's a currently accepted? I don't think they're. I don't, you don't know. If Isn't there like the uh, legitimate, uh, like the journals, just like the though. water? It's like the melt water melt or some shit. Melt like, water in the pulse ice caps or some shit. It's called melt water pulse one B, and that it's a. Uh, it means that there's a massive spike in heat on the Earth, and they could record this with their like samples or whatever. And, like, there's, I mean, a spike. It's like a pulse. And it happens locally, not gradually over thousands of years. But they were thinking So there's a sudden happened. spike in heat. That is what is recorded geologically. In the, in the glaciers? In, or in the world. Okay. And there's also a is that line from, like, core samples? in the dirt. Yeah. And there's also a line globally. I don't know how thick exactly it is. It's like super. But there's a marker, yeah, that dates to young, the Younger Dryas, like 12,000 years 12, ago. And it's soot. It's black ash coal soot. Indicative of massive forest fires. Or fires of some sort. Where a massive amount of carbon is, is just taken up in conflagration. Conflagration. Conflagration, bro. Crazy stuff. So, like, okay, uh, so you have that, right? And so this is like, uh, it's these fires are, are popping off. Like, what is... Okay, so that doesn't even... So that, that basically says, bro, this couldn't have just... Because there's, like, all these different things where they're like, okay, there's damage that's caused by water erosion. We can estimate that there's some like millennial concept where like over many thousands of years water slowly trickles through and cuts lines into the rock, cuts sections into the rock. But that does not seem to match with this sudden period of extreme heat where like, yeah, like was it like 70% of the carbon based material on planet Earth just catches fire for a period of time or something like that. And then... Mm -hmm. Like, and so then you have this thing where, okay, yeah, there's this massive, like, event of, of, ex of violent cataclysmic proportions. And then that's coinciding course, with the disappearance of a, of lot a of continental ice shelf that covers the entire the American, America. North America and I of ice. That's what it was. It was just ice. Okay. Big old fucking hunk of ice. Yeah. Another Antarctica. Yeah, basically, yeah, this massive two mile high thick piece of ice that just covers the entirety of North America gets suddenly disappears. It's just like, oh, I'm not here anymore. And then all these animal species cease is it they cease to exist then or they cease to exist a thousand years later? They don't they don't tell you they some they, period of time. But in this they find their range. bones in like big swaths, like, like they were just bone fields. Chilled. Like, they're not, like, you don't find them. I mean, you can find stuff throughout the world everywhere, but, like, certain amass, amasses yeah. or gatherings or, like, of bone fields that of mammals that died you happen in, there's up in, uh, what is it, Alaska. And uh, it's, like, a big drain, almost, like, and then, like, all these bones, you can find, like, a huge variety of bones of animals that they thought were way more spread out um, at that time and it's crazy to think about how close they are when they died or maybe they died and then were drug across the distance in the mud and like basically drained and then collected in a certain area um, but 
yeah, so there's a disappearance of, like, the world's megafauna. Megafauna basically. disappears. Dinosaurs. Ice, ice shelf bro, disappears. It's, 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 they're dinosaurs, bro. They're so yeah, big. So there's massive, look into that shit. huge animals disappear. They all die suddenly. It's a short period. Of a huge ice shelf that's, that's like two miles, like two miles, like my brother, two miles. Like, understand, no, no two miles as a distance is like, what is that, like 10,000 some, in some change feet, like 10,500, 11,000 feet of ice. That is down from, like, where we are sitting, like, all of us are in the United States, right? So, just like, look, like, <laughs> it's like the, it's like the wall from Game of Thrones, but like, maybe like double the height, right? And it's just, it doesn't just stop. It's not just a wall. It's like, oh, it's like 150 feet thick. No, it is the size of, of a continent. And then it's, it suddenly stops being there over like a relatively geographically short period of time. At the very least, like a thousand years or 500 years, 100 years or a single moment. Well, the fires could have lasted a while. Mm -hmm. um, not sure how long that takes. Um, and how like long it, the corresponding between the core sample of like how wide that is to how yeah and the impact are there any uh, sorry go ahead the impact may not uh, ha that's probably a reason for the discrepancy in the ex the time frame of extinction for certain animals the ones that couldn't survive like this like s major depletion in oxygen or whatever and so like the next hundreds of years they got like sicker and died off or whatever like you know what i mean um they didn't they didn't die necessarily of like the fire or the impact or the flooding they d died of like suffocation slowly over generations um because <laughs> like smoke in the air and shit and uh the um and then 100 meters bro of ocean water a hundred a hundred meters and we're talking we talk about that stuff with client like today you know about the oceans rising a meter a few yeah. meters it's like it rose was it like 400 feet of 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 altitude was was gained by the ocean everywhere on earth yep. and, and so like um, like some places it's just a cliff right so barely the water level just comes up on the but then in other places with the gradual slope from the ocean to the mainland can take up miles and miles and miles of land from the rise in 400 feet. So it's like in like a city like, you know, Boston, Massachusetts just becomes underwater if the, if the water level rose 400 feet from its current point. Are there any like document i guess not document maybe documented um or proposed volcano eruptions around that time too that's um they think maybe maybe there could be um yeah i mean i think that's i would imagine like if you could go around a volcano and maybe carbon date or not carbon date but uh like carbon i don't know if, what the fuck they do with their drill samples but try to predict, like, around the volcano, when's the last time it was uh, active. Yeah, well, I wonder yeah. if, like, you know, bro, this is just speculation, I don't know. But, like, what if it was, like, Yosemite? What if that blew up underneath a glacier? <laughs> that would be, be hilarious, bro. I don't know, it's not hilarious, actually, but it'd just be such a ridiculous experience. To, to... Bro, yeah, but you know what I mean? Like, a... Yeah, it could just be an event like that. Which is just is catastrophic as Which far is... as we can understand today already. Like it would be. So it's like, yeah, to see something like that happen. But they said it happens I mean based on their current methods of calculating volcanic eruption predictions, it's like that is like what's it's like it's like sixty thousand or two hundred thousand years between up eruptions or something. That might just be some calculation. Yep, yeah, but volcanic mass I don't think it was they think it would have been one volcano though i think they were thinking it would be like multiple volcanoes um big ones too mm. uh but you know like it only took the one in iceland to shut down air travel you know how, how many years ago was that 
I could not many. It was re- pretty recent. Yeah, and that was only one volcano, and uh, it got pretty cloudy. Yeah. Uh, we're looking for we're looking for society ending events, right? It's yeah, like, but that it, can quickly scale though, because like when you start pouring that much, uh, I mean, right now look at the air quality of uh, our areas just from the Canada wildfires. I mean, yeah. it kind of chain See, reacts pretty it's, fast. It's, like it's destructive, but I feel like I mean, so yeah, I I think that this is all along the scale that moves towards the types of disasters that we are trying to understand could have happened. To cause the flooding that we're talking about um and so it's like it's it's yeah. not uh, like inconsequential it's uh, on a massive scale and the importance of that is like cannot be understated it's the world changing events that shape human history and we've been here hundreds of thousand years you think we have been we were just idiots the whole entire time until yeah, we, a we, global we, extinction event and then five thousand years ago we we're like oh, hey here's yeah. two plus two equals four um yeah no i agree i think that um it seems like there's there is a concept of this um now my question is like why do you why do you think that these things are labeled as like fringe theories and the like? Like, can we understand like why why is it that like people are want to accept like a very gradual perspective on history history generally? What happens when um let's say do you do you have any like parent or like uncles or aunts or cousins that are like religious? Uh, do I have any that aren't, is the question. Imagine telling them with scientific accuracy that, like, the world ain't like we've been told. What capacity? Ima- like, I mean, sure. Like, you could say, you could give Ab- Abrahamic religions their due. Uh, like, and they may not be unaffected, but like for a mass, I feel like swaths of people are going to be like, oh, people were here. People built these pyramids how long ago? Right. So it's like it's basically the these the timelines provided by religion, but also by scientific. OK, OK, actually, yes. So it's like the religious timelines are thrown out of whack by these discoveries. But then- Human timeline. Okay, so yeah, but so the, the grand human timeline that what is that given. built out of? What is that built out? Of? Those it, timelines, right? So they're built Meso- out of religious, Potamian but they're also Egypt. scientific, archaeologically. And the archaeology as a discipline is kind of comical. It's not actually. I didn't mean that. Nobody hurt me. But like, there's a concept of like archaeological digs being not be- based a lot of times on purposeful excavation of new areas, but on happenstances of like somebody was building something in some location they wanted to make sure there's no sites there so they did some like preliminary digging and say oh nope there's like some like native american burial ground i can't dig here anymore there's some you know other thing that stops me from building in accordance with like municipal laws or something so then it's like okay let's let's understand this a little bit better and then suddenly you discover a lost city or some shit I guess it doesn't happen to like it happens pretty very often. So like yeah. that as the standard, right? So that so that sets a standard of how we interact with these with these things because archaeology is like the foundation of anthropology, which is also the foundation of this longer historical timeline that struck. And every religion has their own because there's like a point, right? There's like a point where religions go from fantasy from like god came down and did such and such to um this is how human beings really like you can always there's always somewhere where you go this is historically confirmed to be true from other sources outside of the religion whether it's jesus christ or some shit or it's moses or it's the buddha or it's confucius and like these figures that come out of they they have they're part of this history that starts off like kind of like oh anything was thing was crazy lands in something that grounds it in reality and then moves forward and then people begin to adopt it 
as a as a cultural, religious, um, and really in, in a lot of cases a political signifier. Like, but then science does the same thing, right? Like science starts from initial assumptions that a lot of times can. Yeah, I shouldn't compare these things so directly because it's not reasonable to do that. But then you're like, okay, we have, lot of we have initial, con- we have a, same, yeah. yeah, we have initial, not necessarily contradictions, but like axioms. Like, okay, the universe was so hot, we can barely understand what the fuck was going on. It was so dense, we can barely understand what the fuck was going on. But if we play back what we understand about thermodynamics and the universe as it is, given astronomy, we have a, a, an astronomer here might not um he might not attest to it but he is in the room um it's like you play <laughs> he's looking around <laughs> yeah keep looking um you, you you play back this story that we built based on our understanding of physics and you get back to this kind of nonsensical starting point where people just hit you with a bunch of contradictions the same way someone can say i am that i am and that's like what god is so what does that mean what does it mean for something to be infinitely small and infinitely hot and then suddenly it it expands to the size of like a hundred million miles in the di- in diameter you're like all right I'm not it's like the physics tells us that but of course it's the same way that somebody can set up a framework that they live by that's a religion that tells you certain things i'm not saying that either ones because for me both are equally valid in their own ways but what I'm trying to talk about right now to get get back into some sort of concrete ground is like why is it that we we are we are in you were talking about this like when I asked like what what is it about the this this kind of resistance of these like cataclysmic theories where things just flip on their head okay this is oh uh, yeah okay so I think I I I got an answer for you uh. um i think it's also in part i think um i an irony a great irony of science is that we're trying to disprove the people are trying to make religious seem um trivial and illogical which it is when taken seriously which people did for a long time and we rightfully had to fight against that you know institute like institutions that Always. We're trying to control people, and but in so doing, in trying to disprove religious dogma, you tossed out a lot of evidence and created a new dogma. Cataclysms? No, that shit didn't happen. Floods? No, that didn't shit. That shit did not happen. Um, yeah, so it, yeah. it's a proper starting point, you know, to shift away from these like. I told you so stuff. Right. Like and a then superiority like of, to, of belief. Right. Um, or just, yeah, and people taking the Bible to be history, which are stupid shit like that. And um, I'll have you instead know. Instead of as parables. Jacob you know was I mean? the son of John, who was the son of, of uh, I don't know. But uh, I think there's something to say, too, that like people hate to be wrong. And so once you have a sort of generally accepted line of myth that works for you and it's kind of like don't if it's not broken don't fix it type thing where you want to try take some science and uproot somebody's uh story and be like ah yes that happened but you know okay, so maybe it happened this time if we if we try to understand that like it's like so basically what happens first is religion gives us like a path a, a path or a story from our past that is lost to anything but like spoken word which is which is interesting and then that is passed down but because of the fact that these things go from just being the stories of different cultural groups to institutional tools for oppression and control they then get rejected by people who want freedom and to in in to um take their freedom from this these institutions of control, they create their own dogma to live by, i.e. like a scientific method, which starts from like things like the Socratic method and other things like that, you know, that leads to Socrates' death amongst other things, and then moves through time, Galileo, all these different people, right? They create their own structure and institution, which is like in many ways, like a stronger institution because of its method, it it relies on this method that that allows you to create this like science, like this 
thing that lets you prove things in, in some purest way you can believe that people who follow the scientific method come away with scientifically accurate and proven results now in practice as always human beings fuck everything up so it doesn't actually work like that not only not even just considering that people also like you were just saying um kaden like to be right and if people want to be right once they have something that they assume to be true they're more likely to try to confirm it than they are to disprove it and so I think that that honestly plays like a big part, even just if we're talking about just an Egyptology, let alone in the whole matter of this gradualist theory generally. Yeah, with Egyptology, it gets really interesting because I think there's, I don't know when it really started happening, but this, uh, probably that fucking horrible history channel, the you know, ancient aliens. God damn it, Action Bronson. Uh, um, right, like, I think it, people are very quick to be to now look at the pyramids and say, hey, history doesn't really make sense. You guys kind of gloss over this. This probably was built uh, not by the Egyptians, which I think that is, that's a tough, that's, a or, that's, a, that's like a break point, right? Because once you start to, like, discredit them for doing it and start being, like, fucking alien Because the, the even or like, you know, just, like, yeah. just the fact that, like, yo, the management, like, it's, like, the management of these sites is conducted by the Egyptian government. And so it's, like, there's a concept of, of cultural heritage that's assigned that means that certain things are kind of required to be true for them to even allow you to step foot in there to try and do something different. It's, like... This is a cultural site, you know. It's like, I mean, it's the same as like if somebody went to Yoruba land in Nigeria and they're like, yeah, this Ife place that you say is your ancestral home, it was probably built by some ancient civilization that you're not technically attached to, which is probably true, but it's like there's an ego. There's a, the culture has an ego that it needs to maintain, you know what I mean? Well, the people, the indigenous people of this continent and the ones and the one below us um, didn't really attach their egos to the construction of these projects. Yeah, you're very right. They were living with the knowledge full well that they were sub, like, sub par. <laughs> no, like, you but say serious, inferior, seriously, huh, huh? No, no. We're right. still inferior to whoever made these things. Right, we could wrote, do it. Like, you... Even if we wanted to in some of these cases, or it would take a massive amount of resources that is unreasonable to achieve these things. Not... Yeah, I don't want to say that we are inferior because our technology yeah, just went in a different way. I'm just saying that in their understanding and manufacturing and their science of however they fabricated these stones um, is at a level of manufacturing that we do not yet have um, the technology for. We haven't, like, even there has been a um, someone sent out not what it was it like a challenge or something like that to, to these major um um like m m what do they call dude it's like um anyways these like places where they shape stones they have these big ass diamond mason masonry i don't know mason what the places it. where they cut stones they sent it to right. Mason. Yeah. They sent it to the ma the plans for the ser the boxes at the Serapium, the two piece boxes where that has a lid and then like the one piece underneath it. The big it. granite one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and there's multiple of them. They're all lined up. There's like a dozen of them underground, um, and they're polished, right? And anyways, so th they sent the specs out. They scanned them like one of the boxes, and they sent the specs out to all of the most advanced and industrial like mace ma mason places mason, mason. <laughs> i can't think of the mason name of the Dalton. like it's not a lab but like Quarry? the stone shop no. Potato head it's a factories? shop like a, a, a stone shop or something and so they could make it if they divided the pieces up like if they did it wall by wall and put them together but no one so far can cut the coffin out of like in that shape 
like out of one piece and like uh like cut the make the incision like have another rectangle inside a bigger rectangle uh for like this casket the stone casket there's like a certain problem that they encounter with Caden what he was talking about earlier with cutting angles like into for well, internal sharp corners is something that a lot of these things, like, they're not perfectly 90 degree corners, but you see they come pretty damn close to it, which just cutting internal 90 degree angles is, you can't do it. Um, Interesting. Not to mention, too, like, some of those things, the bases of them, instead of them flattening the ground underneath, they just cut the stone so that it was level. Like, the base of it would be level. <laughs> we do that. Like, wait, wait. That so, what's is... the con? Like, this is with the the pyramid at Giza. This is in the Serapium. Oh, the it? it's an S E R R A P A U M, and mm -hmm. it's like an underground little cavern. Oh. And there's like twelve yeah. different big ass. Co they called them coffins, huge, but. Yeah. They're massive. I wanted to say they wanted to put like, like, holes in them or something. Like something. Yeah, there's something there. I don't really know what they found in them. I don't. Whatever. It was but like some shit. yeah, the internal cuts, like the cutting the corners on the inside. Like it's the, just wacky. It's so it, wacky. It's so weird. And then so being able to make those right corners into stones like that. It shows up in Puma Punku. That's a really cool that? um, site in Bolivia. Uh, it's, a, it's like a, but it's by Lake Titicaca. Um, and Titicaca used to be like big. <laughs> there used to be a lot more water there. So, um, ever since but, someone actually used the word Titicaca in a sentence without it being a joke, as you were carrying <laughs> Um, Papuma Punku is another site that is like you look at the masonry, you look at the angles that they're able to make, and you you have to come to certain conclusions. Like they had to have some sort of consistent numerical system. Like they had a base number, base measurement, and then they standardized it. You know, they there wasn't it wasn't willy nilly because it looks like. They just like copied and pasted these shapes in stones. You uh, used uh, llama, uh, llama skin ropes. Yeah, <laughs> and to make right angles, to make right angles in stones. Um, oh no, sorry, I was I was looking at Pumu Punku. It says they used, or one of the speculations is that they used llama skin ropes. Yeah. Like, what is that, bro? <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of llama skins together. Yeah, that's <laughs> they're like you're just a llama, and they're, you're like, they're not even gonna eat us, dude. You see, Bob. They just, skin, <laughs> they just took the skin, bro, and left him. Stretch. Bob's whole they family. They fucking stretched him out, bro. He's not even. <laughs> he, he doesn't even look like a damn llama anymore. God damn it. Yeah, no, this is crazy though. Um, Puma the shape is crazy, man, and it's just the fact that they are also a, a multitude of uh, cities, big cities, like civically engineered cities that have just been overgrown by the Amazon jungle, <laughs> um, and the fact that they found artificial soil. It's like terra preta or something like that. It's like a, by artificial, I mean, it's like the steps involved. It's like mixed ash with like some sort of fermented, I don't know, whatever. Eh. They were able to make this type of soil that was spread out around the Amazon and all over. And there's like these pyramids that no one's seen. And you're like, how long does nature take to just cover something so, a, a cover couple. something so big that you think it's a hill yeah there no you think it's just a is man made a mountain you think it's a mountain and oh there's and it's probably like, faster for things that are underwater too right like 
the degradation of sites and how quick they would be covered. Maybe not though. Actually, I think it's honestly the opposite. Like underwater, I think there at least degradation. I would imagine yeah, it would be faster. There's degradation, but like when it comes to the growth of things, like, I feel like growth in terms of like plant growth and like that, I think it's probably worse on land. Maybe there are a lot of like coral reefs that or not coral reefs, but you look at like shipwrecks that are just covered in. Yeah, I guess that's true. Salt There's also a the lot pressure, of salt, and then the pressure from the water. Yeah, um, that's actually good. Speaking of pressure, um, any pressure. Other, any help? I barely know her. No. Uh, any you help, are any help been in a submarine recently? This dude left the call. You <laughs> dropped the mic. He literally dropped the mic. He's wild. <laughs> Bro, I was gonna say, any of you guys been in a submarine recently? No, <laughs> I know some guys that have. They're no, they're unfortunately no longer with us. But they, they, uh, they, uh, they lost in a in a in a, ju- a jujitsu match to uh, the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, you they fuck did, around and not, find out. They did not tap. Um, and, you fuck and he, around and, and find he, out. Uh, and he completed the submission. It sucks because um, I I think that the dude Stockton Rush had like genuine intention of being uh like i think he was genuine i genuinely like he was on yeah, the fucking shit you know like yeah, he, of course it's just he's, he's, he's an engineer he has the credentials um i the mentality he took was innovative which hey yeah people are gonna shit on him i'm more so gonna shit on the people that signed that contract and didn't do their homework to be like okay do i actually trust this thing like no bro what do you, you mean? can't blame anybody else i mean yes, i can my brother he's the, he's the, uh, the head of the company he is supposed to be the arbiter of safety and assurance for the people on there he's telling yeah. them you know he's telling them what they want to hear because he wants to get them on the ship he's saying oh, yeah everything is fine all the different safety regulations he just vibed out he's like what if i just did this in international water so i don't have to deal with that so it's like yeah i think that the people who went on the boat are are stupid but i think that he is intentionally negligent Except for that dude's kid. That dude's kid definitely didn't want to be on that thing. I feel bad for him. Bro, if it was me, I would have been like, it's slow for that. I'm not getting in a boat for any reason, Father's Day or not. Like, like Oh, fuck that. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. That's wild. So, I mean, it sucks <laughs> to die. Like, I, I hear that it's pretty rough to cease to exist. Like, don't get me wrong. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, y'all, y'all really did that to yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. It's it's uh anyway this is not the topic of this discussion. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It is really crazy. Uh, but okay. fucking people have been shit. Yeah, they're like the amount of memes and like shit talk that people have put on uh, for that kind of. It's just crazy to me. Like I get it, but at the same time, I'm like, yeah, it's a little. Oh no, I I, I people. Love it's just it. easy pickings for no, people. It is. People love and I, it. And I just there, hop on I'm a bad that, person. Uh, I'm I'm a I'm a bad person. I'm in there. I'm in there, bro. Way to be a way to be a propri- proprietor of it. Nice. I'm in there, dog. I'm in there. Yeah. They make joke. I laugh. Hello. What do I look like? Do I look like a, a an arbiter of truth, bro? Am I a, <laughs> am I a fucking am I a saint? There's no halo here, bro. I'm I'm barely a human being at this point. Anyway, uh. <laughs> so yeah, the aliens definitely built the pyramids. I think that's what we're getting to. Yeah. 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 So the alien, the aliens. So uh, yeah. What's uh? What like, is there? Uh... Honestly, Think I'll of actually... a question. I got a pee, dude. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Here, let's let's actually take let's take a short break. Let's take a let's take like a. I'll be back in. Oh uh, uh, yeah, sure. I was thinking I'll be back could... right. Okay, yeah. Go. I don't mean to. If you want to take a break. Well, I was thinking that we could take <laughs> hold it. Depends on how long, <laughs> like how how long we're trying to go. We could just take a we could take a break and come back in like five minutes. Or do you guys yeah, want to so kind of just... you guys want to just clean it up? Just no, I, we're just getting started. All right, bad, bad. <laughs> I'm gonna also use the bathroom then. Yeah, okay. Let's take yeah. let's take a break. We'll be back in like ten. Cool. Seven time. Should I mute? Forgive me, man. I'm just like scrolling here. I'm yeah, trying to good. sort it through the. Yes, yes, I found it. Oh, found yes. It. Oh yes. Oh. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> of Hattusa, the pyramid of Hattusa. Where's that? The big pyramid was... mystery of Hatosa. 
if you want, look it up right now too, if you want a screen share or something. And this is for anybody else who wants to look at a cool video. And it's CF-APPS7865. It was so hard to recall. 8675309. Wait, so the... Oh, is this even it? Fuck! It's not the wrong, oh, right one. <laughs> the big clown. Yo, sorry. That's not the one. But this is one of them. It's similar. I trust you. Fuck! Wait, wait, wait. So, wait, explain it in your best words. Anyways. Dude, so, one of them... One of these pictures, or the picture, not the picture, the pyramid, is, uh, it's covered in soil at, in a way that looks like it got, like, there was, like, a lot of soil got, like, smushed onto it. Because in my head, when I think about erosion, I mean, how do... Erosion when I, doesn't seem to work like that. I mean, could it or have just, been a lands like a landslide event? It's one, it's one, yeah, but you know, like up a pyramid. No, no but it's, it's a, a big if the hill. Big if the hill was landslide. bigger than the pyramid in the first place, next to the pyramid, and then it. Oh, oh, you're right. I have to find the. Oh, fuck. Uh, okay, so the, the, the pyramid. You used to have so many. I mean, yeah, so it looks like the pyramid is... Well, this janky way of putting this here. Yeah, the pyramid does seem to be... Yeah, it's like coming down the hill now. But it's interesting that it that the soil was there already to, in the first place. But see if you can explain a uh, concept. Awesome. Uh, right. <laughs> Please enlighten us. Um, damn, dude. Anyways, so th this is one of many in the area of the upper Amazon. Upper South America. Um, along the coast to um, west side. The so anyways, so in this in the oh fuck, this is probably Central America ish. Okay, I'm not gonna be able to do this the whole time, and uh, basically, if you have a pyramid that's on par with this, like Quetzalcoatl, like we were talking about earlier, the Sun City, one of them, anyways, yeah. of which when you look at it and you see the megalithic parts of it you see the same type of technique used with this pyramid and it's like white granite or whatever and um it's massive but like the soil the way it was coming over it so if you have it like is a it was a tiered step pyramid and the soil would stop like uh, up until like one side of it like it was half or like two-thirds covered and then you have like this like perfect like this megalithic stuff just like jutting out at the base that didn't get covered but the rest like the cut the top and the, the other portion of it so there's you have like one corner coming out and like for sh for sure, like a uh, a hill could have been next to it, and there may have been a landslide. But I mean, like that's a it's a lot of soil. There's a lot. It's like so. It sounds like there's a... could it have been used for construction? Uh, what do you mean? Um, could in building it, they have slowly built up a ramp on the side to grant lot more access to like workers and material to like make it easier to bring stones to their place. Right, but this would no, because the uh, pyramid's complete. So like they scanned it, I think, and underneath the soil, it's just like one big nice pyramid. Uh, it's just like it looks to me. Yeah, but like, what if they never got the chance to undig it? Like if they they finished it, 
and then before they were able to i mean that's that's far-fetched as fuck but like i don't know uh, i've seen concepts of pyramid building right where they they start there's no ramp they start at the base it's a right obviously a bottom up build and but as they get towards the top in order to like make um make it easier to like leverage larger stones up higher instead of like stepping up they'll build like a ramp sort of perpendicular to one side leading into it you know what i'm saying like that that yeah. kind of concept sure but it, i mean it's just soil it looks like a hill it looks like a wave of mud so like smushed onto it and the soil sort of... just kind of stopped what about in like, like a like a no, uh, landslide, like a cat, like a catastrophic landslide. It look, yeah. But, but it would have to be a very, very tall, massive amount of soil moving. I wish I had a pic. The picture makes it so clear, dude. I'm. Just, um. I wish I had the. I mean, whatever. if you want to take like... a moment to look it up, I wanted to talk more about um, like the concept of dogma, in uh in these things like because like like we were talking about before the break like I, like i feel like there's just such an interesting thing that i see in so many places where people very quickly buy into a side one side or another of an issue and then they maintain that regardless of what's going on and i think that um i think that like it seems like archaeology is not i don't know i think it seems like archaeology is a, is like a is touted as a hard science but in many ways, it's a so it's like a social science because it's like they're not in many cases like things like just like we were talking about with like the geo geological expertise of like Robert Shaw. It's like it's considered a fringe theory in archaeology that a particular type of erosion was created using water. So it's like that is a fringe theory just because this theory exists in this area that is dominated by archaeologists rather than by people of those fields because it's like if you're an engineer or you're you're like a mechanical engineer or something like that right and you have some understanding of machining techniques and how that might affect the the the, the work of a of stone you might have an insight into the project that makes you go okay yeah it's literally impossible for certain things to happen um because of this the nature of the physics and the mechanics involved but if you don't have those insights and you're an archaeologist who's worked on an area who's studied under another archaeologist, like a lot of times you come away with this idea that you, you kind of start to, to because of like your lack, it's not because of like any fault of your own necessarily. You just have a lack of knowledge about particular disciplines that are not specifically discovering ancient shit. And so then when it comes time for you to decide, okay, is it reasonable that this was machined by Paleolithic humans? You might say no, because the in the inner corners are fucking perfect. And, like, they couldn't even pretend to do that. But, like, <laughs> it's like, gotcha. but you, you do that. You it's it all a ruse. Uh, so it's like, so, I don't know why that doesn't even make sense. It's like All that's right. like the concept. So I think that so, it seems like it's like that. Like archaeology has like this has like a lot of dogma in it, and it's like a lot of it is not based in the the, the disciplines that it because it intersects with so many disciplines. Like whenever there's engineering, it intersects with that. It intersects with so many different things like chemistry and all these different things. But then, like archaeologists just make their own conclusions so quickly. It seems like a what you guys think about that? Yeah. I mean, I think there are, there's definitely, a, a, I think, crosstalk. I don't think archaeologists are just pulling things out of their ass. I think they do uh, refer to engineers on these things, but I mean, it seems like, I mean it, it's like garbage in equals garbage out. So if you have archaeologists coming there and they're like, oh, you know, they, they don't. They could gloss over very important facts that would otherwise be a telltale of like something fucking crazy. So, for example, tube drilling. Like there, there are a lot of tube drills found, or like evidence for tube drilling found around the Giza plateau, and 
the crazy thing about it isn't that they exist because you can kind of show that you can tube drill something using sand water and copper it's not it's painful um but i guess maybe in theory you could do it there's like still some contention around that but I, there there have been like um there have been i would say minor demonstrations that it is possible that would suggest it's possible to tube drill however when you look at the detail of the cut pattern so you can look at the feed rate for the drill whatever it must have been um there was like a lot of contention over a one piece where people were like okay you see these cutting lines but are they continuous is it a helix what eventually they show okay it's a helix You're like all right cool um how fast were they cutting into this stone um this is essentially it was fucking crazy um for how hard of a material the granite is so materials and they're just it's like they're isn't it like they're just puncturing it like it's just uh, like a like it's just like so what is it like how do you measure this like um this feed rate or this like penetration rate you literally just look at the gap in the helix going down the drill so you so can like drill, measure okay go ahead yeah, yeah so um no, that, that's pretty much it. You just look at the helix. There's a like a line from where you would have had your cutter, okay. uh, and you just look at the gap in between the successive uh, like lines so in the helix. Thinking about it like the way you think about like like a not like a like a drill bit that you might use like as a power tool, like right. that also has its own selection of grooves. So yeah. And so, would it be similar to like so you drill into something at some rate, and then you have these the lines of it drilling down like that on the edges of your the circle or the cylinder the cylinder cylindrical cavity that's been created, right? And then you can use the gap between the lines that are healing down to decide to to determine how quickly it's been penetrated. Essentially, yeah, and so. This is like a very common thing you run into in modern manufacturing where you're drilling into aluminum or steel, especially when you're using automated machines, right? You have to go in and tell that machine how fast to go into a material. And if you fuck that up, you're going to break the tool. And if you break a tool, it's almost very obvious. Like more, than, more often than not, when you break a tool, um, there will be evidence of it in the parent material that you're like drilling into. Um, and then yeah so like when you consider the forces that would have been required uh to do it it just it doesn't make sense and like when you look at the the in-person demos of how you could do a tube drill the lines so that they make are not continuous at all you can very much tell that it's yeah and the experiment they ran to make the same tube drill they couldn't break out the core with bronze, they had, they actually used a steel chisel in the end to knock it off. I have a theory about that, actually. If you look in the the video that they did it in, they only du did a tube drill like two inches, two, like maybe four inches, we'll say. To give be can you know, yeah. um, but if you look in the video, right, it was like sort of it wasn't a ton. Uh, it was not then, very deep. Yeah, you look in some of the other tube drills that are made, and they're, like, super deep. Um, I, I think it would be easier to break a piece out if it was deeper. I think you would have more um, torque on the base of the part, right? So that's that's something, but it's still, that's a question, right? Like, if they were to be using these copper tools, like, that shit. They couldn't do it in the video. They had to use a steel Wait, so a tube uh, drill, steel chisel. how is the tube drill, like, is it, so it's like a, it has an empty middle part, and then a, a cutting, like, cylindrical piece? It's not a, yeah, it's not really a drill like you would think of it, um, at least in how they made it, it's basically just a cylinder, and then they, uh, <laughs> they just rub it into the <laughs> fucking stone, and throw sand and water in it, like. Right, 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 so wait, why do they call that? Why are they so confident that is the strategy that was used? Why are um, they so, so confident? 
Tolu? Because <laughs> well, when you look at the base of the drills, you see that there is, um, in some of them, they're not perfectly flat at the bottom. And so uh, they're, they're blind holes. They're not through holes. They're into material that stop before going all the way through. It's a blind hole. But at the very base of the hole, you can see a circular ring around it. So it suggests that uh, it cut deeper around the perimeter than it did in the center. Ah, okay. And so that's why it kind of makes sense that it would be like a tube used. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're Did they talk about like the length of the tube that they would need to make to reach the bottom? Or did they like... Because wouldn't it have to be a... Long. It has to be pretty long, yeah. It has to be pretty long and sturdy, and like also, uh, what's on the end of a pole? Pretty straight, like, um, I think would be. I don't. I want to know more about like the lips that they find at the bottoms of the holes, like how thick those lips are, because if they're. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it just be talking about thick lips, bro. It's good. Sorry. Well, right. I don't know about you guys, but like, I'm sorry. I don't know about you guys, but I don't. I'm not. This dude looking for thick <laughs> lips at the bottom of a hole, bro. That's crazy, bro. That's crazy. <laughs> um, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. But point being is like, yeah. if it's a very, if they look at that perimeter this the circle at the very bottom of the hole it's super thin that's kind of, that's even crazier right because yeah it's I don't like, know. The like they, how they, do you create something that wouldn't like what materials can you use to create a drill they would have used like bronze <laughs> that's all they had like, um, what's the at least as far as we know uh, but so the uh um what was i gonna say oh yeah so the thing I hope that they did in their demonstration is that they looked to some example for how thick to make their tube. I hope they didn't just arbitrarily choose like some copper tube uh, with whatever you know thickness and go with the experiment because that's but that would be cheap. This brings me to like the, my whole thing, right, with archaeology. Okay, I, I'm I'm going on a war against archaeology today, but it's like, why would it just be some random archaeologists that did to do this experiment? Wouldn't you just hire like a, a an engineering firm or something to come and do it for you? Not necessarily, to push, because to extrapolate, oh. to extrapolate maybe, yeah. No, yeah. I'm, no, I'm saying so that you can no. have the most effective. Like, it's like if you wanted to say, okay, how do we? I guess they're trying to do it with the normal methods, right? Or like the ancient methods. But it's yeah, like, there has there would have to be some trade off, like I some would just handoff. Be like, create this tool any way you know how. Make it so you can make a cut like this. You know what I'm saying? No, um, and then see how it works. I, I, oh, but they could, but it would yeah. more than likely be made of materials that we don't think were available to the people of that time. Like there's um cool like out of place archaeology or whatever you, that's a term that you can use to search up some uh artifacts a lot of it is um it's probably like bullshit in, in the uh in the search query but the uh like for instance um in the Egyptian Natural History Museum uh there's this like um section that this guy like uncharted x um videoed um which was illegal for a while people couldn't bring in cameras or some shit anyways um the there's like a amongst these like bronze tubes that are in like other like crude rocks and flint um like chisel stuff um there's this like blue perfect sphere with uh, like a gold, looks like gold like um uh if you ever worked a lathe it's like one of those that you hold it i don't even remember what it was but in woodworking i forgot the term yeah. but it looks like what the lip that you use to carve out stuff on a lathe just like carve chunks out and it's like a perfect and it's polished and it looks real sh 
freaking nice dude like aesthetic and then it's like right yeah. next to crude ass like weird things you dug up out of the ground like yeah um well that's the thing you don't need anything too crazy to cut necessarily like they could just i mean oftentimes what you find now in modern machining when you make cutting tools you make them out of somewhat like relatively cheaper materials but then you make it so that they can take inserts of very strong and like uh i guess like prized material like carbide inserts are a very popular thing in metalworking because um you just have a steel shaft and then instead of the entire shaft wearing down you just screw in a little hard diamond tip thing essentially it's not diamond but uh you know Hard. rare stones were a thing like yeah you could definitely do that um so that's super interesting oh. um yeah but um what i think what to come back to the starting point of where we branched on this topic with Tolu's point of like why are they confident about this when they can't explain some of the things they find and um it's a really good point I think it's a really fair criticism of archaeology um, to say that there's too much emphasis on religious ceremony and burial rites. Like, that's mm. all I hear, really, for, like, any tool that they find. When, in reality, if you're living, like, out of the stuff that you have in front of you, like, the tools and the stuff like that, you necessarily you have to tie knots and like you have to weave things and you have to maybe they were smoldering things or maybe they were crafting stuff out of wood that we don't know and they were like they there are certain tools that when you look at them you're like what is this what is this for the purpose of it is not inherent upon visually. Kind of pretty shape. Damn, what did you miss? I thought he was just being. He's just. <laughs> hitting he's his just way. pausing on he that. He paused point, for right? dramatic effect, <laughs> but it was just his internet. Shit. What was my last word? What, did, was, what was the last? It was word? when you when you made this action. Right. Um. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, bro. Uh, yeah. Come here. Yeah. No, sorry. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's like the Ace Ventura um, scene in the a mental hospital. Yeah. Uh, um. So they find these shit. Like, oh, oh so you look at uh, the tool, mm -hmm. and it's like handheld or whatever. Yeah. And its function isn't necessarily in, like, visually inherent. It's not like apparent. you can't. It's not obvious, yeah. obvious what the function of it, even though it could be a well-used tool to sharpen like another bone or something like that. And the, you just don't happen to have the eyes for the intuition you know, tool making. This is what I think, right? I think all of the... Man, I feel as though there have been a lot of things lost to rot, like theft too, over time. Um, changes locations. Uh, but point being is that, like, if, in my head, if you, to kind of Jacob's point, had this, like, sort of technology that your community depended on, it would be pretty prized. You'd keep that sort of safe somewhere. Um, and I think very well you would almost, like, time capsule it in some way. I don't know. I wonder too if like people in the past have just stolen things and been like, "Oh, what the fuck is this?" Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah, <laughs> you know, for like, sure, for sure. That's a right? like that's like a big thing. That's a and it, today just not knowing what it even is. Even today, yeah. dig stuff up and you're like, someone is gonna buy this from me. Yeah, like this is this for a is lot a of cool. money. And then sometimes you know the like the peasant that stumbles across the cool thing. You know, <laughs> and yeah. then this stuff is like worth millions because they don't understand the vat, like the vat, the meaning of the, you know. Anyways, it's crazy. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, um, there's something I want to talk I think, about. I don't know yeah. if you're going to switch topics. It's not really that much, but it's like I wanted to talk about the, the stone Wait. bases. Yeah. Let's oh, did do you it. find and that then, thing you were you you were looking for? It's an adjacent one, okay. a better, cooler video of by the same guy. Okay, zoom in. Do you want to actually? Do it. It's a very cool place. Like, I don't. I um if you go and just look at the images of it and you can this is what I was going to try and come towards um a visual Seno, representation so okay. these people were trying to recreate the shape of something that was once much greater and you can see it like clear as day in this like you can see where somebody was skilled and where somebody wasn't Right, like the one lower down is very much. And on top of it, because it was all destroyed and they tried to re they tried to pay homage oh, or okay. get back, or the people that once survived thought they could re or recreate Wait, it. Wait, can you show way. that again? Yeah. It almost looks like there was a massive, very fancy temple that got super weathered and then they built on this like facade of less lesser stuff. Yeah. That's the, that's the impression I get from the photo. All the small stones and stuff like that would, would in my opinion, I, would I represent the opposite, right? Like would, it would be the be, later yeah. works. Um, it's just that shape at the top that goofs me out. I'm like, yeah, that looks like it would have been like a monument of some sort. Oh yeah, it looks almost like a puma, like a puma, like facing its head out, like facing towards the oh, yeah. um. Oh okay. My microphone, like it looks like a head, like yeah. of a some sort of cat or something. Something just came to my thought. Okay, so now this is, we're about to get into a little bit of a of a wacky wacky tacky land here. You're a wacky guy, dude. Ah, uh, true. So I think it's too late. Uh, we we already we've been here the whole time, but um, so we're we're, we're talking about um how there's an over reliance on monuments and burial grounds, and it comes to uh to um ancient like structures and monoliths and all this stuff so in the case of the the great pyramids um i've i've read about and i've listened to podcasts where people talk about a uh like the act like actual uses for the pyramids beyond just Khufu's burial site right so obviously if we are prepared to date these things back in the past like setting that as like an a premise it's like there's also this concept that everyone talks about when they go to the pyramids which i, I have not yet done that there's like there's like a, a resonance to the pyramids that is just absolutely like one it's just it's a uh, it's ear uh what's it called irrefutable and like like omnipresent like you get into the pyramids and you suddenly feel like you're just in like a i don't know like a like one of them triangles that people hit with a stick. A triangle. A symbol. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're in some some shit like that, and like the whole thing is just vibrating. <laughs> so it's like, what is the basis of that? Is it just because they were like cool? They were pretty chill vibers, and they were like, "Yo, what if we just participated in music?" And then they buried some dude at the in the middle, or you know, because I've seen some people talk about it in some sort of perspective of either um actually no specifically to do with some sort of uh power source situation but you know that's that's the wacky tacky land stuff so i don't know what you guys think about the resonance or anything i don't have much thought on it yeah. um i mean it would be cool that'd be super cool i would love for there to be some crazy uh acoustic but you know mechanism within but i think um guys that i don't know do you think it could be a placebo effect you get there and you're just like yeah i mean it's very possible it could, it could just be like slightly it's... echoey and then i don't know no. <laughs> but i do i do know of right we had talked about recently the um this they had brought a or maybe this is actually in a video i watched but they brought a 
opera singer to i think like the king's yeah. uh tomb or somewhere around there and then had somebody at like the very base the way very below bottom basement underneath yeah and they could like hear um i don't know if there's like any real um uh, take away from that but it was cool <laughs> well they hmm I mean, I, I want us to not it's worry a, about the power source thing. Obviously, I think I'm curious to know, like, how does like how does resonance play? Like, if you just have a granite block on its own and you hit it with something, is is that does that produce like some sort of a similar thing, or is there just some particular engineering requirements to create a system like the one inside the the Great Pyramids? I would like, so just to. Uh, um, suspend ourselves just a second. The plateau, the Giza plateau, I think, had running water underneath it because it has those labyrinthian tunnels, and there was like some sort of water running through it, and there was certain places where it would pool, and you could even think of it maybe there was a dock. Um, I don't know. Like, there are theories for like that being a mechanism and how they built the pyramids too and got blocks to where they were. Yeah, like hydro they used hydraulics to do some of this stuff too. Yeah, maybe. like um I'm not with the resonance stuff is cool, dude. I mean it's like you they really had cool amphitheaters and they were, had really played with space a whole lot and with us, know, us like um, pretty sure pretty sure you can have something that has multiple functions. I mean, yeah, so I, elaborate would probably have like a lot of parts that mm -hmm. would overall play together. But I'm not, you know, like a building has, depending on what type of building it has, and that's how it's decked out. You know, has multi right. can serve multiple purposes. So, what do you got? So, um. So you really to like your question that the to those is more of just like a like a uh, kind of like a natural occurrence or just something that maybe there has some reasoning behind it but it's not very clear at all. I think I want to know what like the, I want the the resonance to be better characterized. I want to know what right, it is because if it's just like an echoey room Ooh. sort of vibe or like sound is able to pass um well from point a to point b within the structure then yeah i don't know i mean there, there i think there's definitely evidence that they had some understanding understanding of acoustics um right like the amphitheater and stuff uh, obviously it was like a testament to that and even the stones that they used to build amphitheaters with um kind of to your question they were aware of certain stones having better acoustic properties than others so um you know, that could that have been consideration. Yeah. And they're, because they're, again, uh, I think we said this, the very picky about what the they made their stuff out of. Yeah. And there seems to be a pickiness that, you know, is, um, traverses oceans. So right, yeah. it's not like, in my head, the term Atlantis. I'm not like a fan of it because I think we're like, I think it connotes too much. Um, it just seems like a system where people exchanged information and how to build stuff and like to think that. Okay, have you ever looked at a map of the Earth, it's particularly the Southern Pacific Ocean? what it would look like from India to South America a hundred meters lower with the ocean, uh, sorry, the ocean a hundred meters low. Yeah, There's yeah. a lot of land. amounts of a lot of land, dude. And like, it would have been easy to get to Australia. I think it was actually connected. Australia was by, um... you could get there by foot. So at that point, you're like Australia to Chile. Or something and then like it's not and these people 
I'm doing this shit with drill drilling. Uh, you don't think they can float on the water? Like that's probably they they can suspend a hundred ton blocks. I think they could get you know like they could go. Is the idea they didn't know how to float on water? Bro, I mean, you think uh, were the Mayans like (laughs) seafarers? I like that's what I mean. Like just ships. I'm not. I'm floating on water as in just building a ship and going from like the people that could make these structures. I feel like could also do something. Yeah, and they're so they could share information with each other. Yeah, and it's not like one civilization. Like this is because if you look at it, if you with a fine tooth comb, you can see there's differences locally per area that they're built. Like people have like a stamp of culture onto like the ones in Mexico versus the ones in Japan versus the ones in Egypt. You know, they all have kind of like their own, but Wait, they're still made in the same insane. way, like starting point, like basic ability and mm. type of cutting and joinery and construct like certain ge- geometric I mean, intuition. Especially with those casing stones like we were talking about, like comparing those casing stones to something like those, um, those, those large stone walls in, um, was in Peru, where like the stones are like fit together perfectly, but they're like these irregular and oblong shapes. And it happens in Egypt as well. They have like yeah, exactly. Like they the the corners of you of the walls on from the inside, you can see some of the stones go like on both sides. Like it, the stone comes around, like makes a ninety degree yeah. around. There are also some that almost look like upside down trapezoids that would suggest they were like dropped in to place. Like some were, um, some were like slid there, and then others were. Yeah, there's almost like I, I think it's a pattern that you can see on certain sides that would suggest like how some would have came to be. Uh, you can imagine, right, if you have two trapezoids sitting down, and then a trapezoid in the middle. Like, there's no way. It would just make sense that the trapezoid in the middle came last. Like they would have these two on the side, and then you would just like slide this other one over into it. As a, but maybe not. I don't know. Um, yeah, there's something I was gonna say. Oh yeah, I was gonna say that it sounds to me like there's like some notion of a pre, like Atlantis or not Atlantis, or some shit being like some sort of prehistoric globalist concept. A inter, like a global society from like a time when the, the the geography of the earth was like different as a result of different water levels um yeah i mean why i don't even know why who why that we use that word if it's true to the people or not like if that's why they call what they called like I don't even know. I think the idea was like some. It was like what's his name? Plato just coined it. But he. It's a Greek word. So he, right? But in those texts that Plato brings up, he's ref, the guy that tells the story. Is like, the, um. There, there's like a longer history, for this, and that Atlantis was part of a succession of civilizations that kind of have come and gone and like um like there's uh, that um yeah <laughs> it's just, it's just i don't I, i'm like i really don't like it because people go looking for a certain singular local structure it's not yeah it's not like that it's like the same way to understand our modern society. Like, obviously, we didn't make anything out of stone, <laughs> so it's, it's all gonna go away in like a thousand years. But um, the fact is that to understand modern human society, there's parts of it at, all over the globe. It doesn't just exist in like Washington D.C. Like, but maybe you could say that like there's a city that is the biggest out of all of those cities or something like. That. What if it was like, what's the biggest city you can think of? Maybe Atlanta. it's like a billion. Yeah, word. All right. it's like a, like five hundred million people in Shanghai. Okay, that's the biggest city. So 
if if everything was to collapse, that place might have the best chance of lasting the longest. And I don't know, or not. Like I don't know. Yeah, running a city without power. Well, no, but I mean, you know, d- don't worry about that. The, uh, yeah, in the some sense, that logistics. might be the quickest to fall. Right, right, right. Okay, so don't you're, you guys are trying to don't need to dig into that. What I'm what I'm trying to say is okay, like, okay. there's like one place where it lasts the longest because of some capability or whatever. So then it it gets to sh- shoot its um it gets to put its like what it knows into the future much more than other parts of the same interconnected society that spans the whole planet yeah yeah that's, that's the amish saying. would survive Not the, amish, the downfall How, Dude, they would bro, survive blowing the fuck up bro if they survive the blowing the fuck up part <laughs> they're the true. ones to, they're gonna be like we told you <laughs> yeah, <laughs> self-sustaining yeah like all those weird little cults in texas they'd be probably okay too. they don't if they don't fucking drink kool-aid for some reason They'll churn their butter and they'll shut up. God damn it! It actually wasn't Kool Aid. It was um. They make wine. It was uh. It was fucking Minute Maid was... or something. Yeah, it was so much stupid shit. Minute Maid with fucking cyanide in it. Honestly, it's kind of sounds like it'd be pretty good. I like apples. Out. It's a different. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Uh, so uh, what was I trying to say? So like. I'm not- what were you trying to get at? So there's actually an interesting concept. What One thing we trying to say. Well, what okay. were we getting at? <laughs> we were talking about uh, on, one second, one second. the problem with the Atlantic, the Atlantic, the Atlantis concept. And yeah, oh, now we're bringing Atlantis into it. Oh, well, that's what we're, I mean. We're not talking about Atlantis, as in like fucking. I don't know. We shouldn't call it that. I don't know what to want to say about it, but some sort of. If you want to bring it like, into it, you like, can talk like, about it. it's an interesting concept. Yeah, I mean, even you ignoring up, there's like a city of prosperity and knowledge that is talked about, but then it's just yeah. gone. But yeah, even if we say okay, don't talk about Atlantis. It's just like okay, there's like this knowledge of like a what people say was a civilization which was six thousand years ago, sunk into the ocean, and then. You say, okay, it sunk to the ocean 6,000 years before Plato's time, which is like, what is it, 2,700 years ago? Um, I'm not going to have any dates on my mind. I'm terrible with that shit. Yeah, no. I mean, I just, I'm just trying to, because it's like basically that, like, the sinking of Atlantis is like somehow yeah. um, put to be like, what is it, 11,500 years ago, whatever the Younger Dryas event was. So it's like there's yeah, this concept. Interesting. It's interesting. Um, in pers- Especially with like how they describe Atlantis being surrounded by water, and um, yeah, I mean when you think about coast, like sort, you brought this up, I think, very briefly earlier. But erosion on a gentle coastline is yeah. going to be much worse than if you have just like a jagged edge that the water is sitting up against. So. So you have like a city built all along that that can get washed away. Yeah, it's like you raise your water, you raise Fair. the height of your seas at 400, 400 feet or whatever it is, and yeah, like that's it. Like you could, it's like you think about what happened to M- Malaysia. Like Malaysia was a continent or whatever, and then now it's just some islands because it's like the the peaks of their fucking hills and their mountains are all, I mean the peaks of their mountains is what's left. Of what used to be like its own continent before this like raised water water um height, water level. A very interesting example to me uh is of easter island um they there's a video this local was talking to the videographer he was saying that these guys were scanning the uh, island uh island's periphery and the land mass of easter island actually goes out a little ways and guess what? Guess what? It was only like 50 meters deep or something. Um, it goes out a big ways. And along the side, 50s to, I think it was like 75 meters deep, they found these like rectangular cuts out of the stone. Like marks that are the same ones as the upper on the side of the mountain of East Island. And uh, I mean, you tell me, were, were the Maori doing underwater mining? Was the culture that like they learned how to hold it really well? 
Yeah, the summaries. culture that chose their leader by making them swim out and fetch an egg and not get eaten by sharks. Like, the, were they doing underwater Eat. mining? They ate sharks for 10,000 years and became sharks. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's wild. Um, I mean, fucking, yeah. No, that's uh, fucking crazy, right? It was obviously it points to it just being above water, and that was their quarry site, and then it got flooded. Which, yeah. Why isn't that talked about? Uh, it it it's it's hard to accept the fact that there were people doing sophisticated things and then got annihilated, like just lost to time. I think it's because it completely basically it it doesn't. I don't know. Yeah, I think the biggest thing, the biggest problem is that literally every part. Of society relies on the truths that archaeology and somehow religion all agree on which is that even if evolution is what happened and all these different things take place you know personally i'm a, I'm a big evolution um is that you end up with a system that gives you this neat like ten thousand year period in which humans stopped being um um fucking cavemen suddenly everything came together and we all experienced nirvana and you know the universe came down and touched our consciousness Such a good man right and so God like touched mary <laughs> oh he touched <laughs> Oof. sorry okay, my bad. oh that's uh, blasphemy uh, hey man it's too late they can't burn us anymore we won go do your hail marys right now the nihilists uh, won um all I, hail mary <laughs> yeah zeke hail mary okay i'll stop um, yikes. Uh, what was I going to say? I was going <laughs> to I missed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry. You'll, you'll, you'll hear it when it gets uploaded to YouTube. When um, they fucking put you at the stake. Yeah, yeah, word. When they, when they fucking tie me to a tree and light it. Uh, so what was I saying? I was talking about something. Light it like a no, Christmas tree? Uh, yes, that, yes. Um, so oh, yeah, it's like the thing where everything is is neatly placed in this period of of natural progression where we start out kind of getting an idea. We somehow we suddenly gain the ability to do tools, and then we use tools for like but fifty thousand years or whatever it is, and then you know we enter into this ten thousand year period where human beings go ah yes civilization, and then like all of Civ Six plays out over like a couple afternoons. And you're like, oh nice, we've done it. And you end up with like the civilizations we know today that come out of Egypt and out of um, the Indus River Valley and all this shit. And it's like saying something as simple as like, hey, maybe there was some civilization. Because it's like, okay, humans have been the same for 200,000 years at least. So for the first 190,000 years, I guess we were just literally just posted up, like just literally scratching our asses. You know, and like that's. There's other types of yeah. people too. No, we, there are like, definitely other, the, yeah. Denisovans and the Neanderthals, right, and like other types of people. Well, those didn't even go extinct till like relatively recently, too. But like they don't put any of those into us. Like they make they're all tool users and shit, but they're none of them are civilization builders except for us, right? Uh, I would so it's all relative, again, right? Tolu, this would have been they would have been building civilization, like with iter iterationally, like. Over time, they would have been. They would have been like, at it, like there could have been rises and then falls, and there's oh, yeah. rises and falls. I know. I, I'm and agreeing with they that. They reached. So, like, and the Denisovan, like, uh, they um, are finding nice. rings, like metals. Yeah, and like, so they were using metals on lathes and i think that's an indication of that they were building civilization of some sort mm, okay. like, um like i think people are trying to inhabit and like secure some sort of like non-jungle existence to some extent like we're not just one we're not just like building tents along the way and like roaming like we're establishing knowledge like of what to eat how to uh, cook it or like find it or prepare yeah. it 
how to prepare the thing the tools used to prepare the things that we eat how to like x y and z go all the way down to and then like we've been doing this for a long time i think i think the civilization part yeah i i agree takes so many forms like where there's gathering of people exchanging knowledge see i think there's just like this notion right i'm i'm not i'm 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 trying to express like why some of these theories are like what you're saying which seems so reasonable like you could just sit down with a piece of paper the first thing you write down is one plus one equals two and then you slowly go through things that make sense and base it off of knowledge that you understand about the world and you end up with some the conclusions that you're coming to right now but i feel like in modern society there's like this thing where strangely archaeology and religions agree that like over the last ten thousand years we went from fairly primitive to super advanced or something and like i think that um i uh i wonder why it's so hard to to consider other concepts you know you want to talk about the cover-up brother the conspiracy bro, i Wait, ran don't... out of foil bro i ran out of aluminum i can't no, don't but... like a bunch of religions not even start the world until like a couple thousand years ago yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of them start like, but they all start like kind of with like the obviously. You know how hard it was to overthrow the church, <laughs> the, yeah. the, well, the Vatican I mean, is still hiding artifacts. Yeah, the British Natural History Museum still, is yeah. hiding artifacts. The Smithsonian is hiding, is hiding artifacts. artifacts. I understand what that means. They have huge swaths. They're lying bro. to you, people. Banks. Wake up. They have banks. They have serious amounts of data that people could go and data. look at. Got data, ladies and gentlemen. They got data oh, yeah. they ain't sharing, brother. And yeah, you're not sharing that data. But I don't know. There's um there's a really cool in Mexico, they have in the Mexico City's Natural History Museum, this guy did a walkthrough of the Olmec section. And I shit you not. You and this was in the Mexico City Natural History Museum. Like, it was. No joke. All right. So the 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 right made this stuff. Right. So one of the artifacts is a a, a kid's rocking chair. Like it. Like uh, not. Oh, if I fucked it up. A kid's rocking horse. Like the ones okay. that has the four wheels. On the side, and yeah. Push back and forth oh, and ride shit. on yeah, wood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's made of stone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a great. That's, that's kinda... a great punchline right there. I don't know the, why. Oh, the first what ever. What the fuck car. is that? Yeah, that's Dude, they why. They don't have the wheel. They don't have the wheel. But then there's just... four <laughs> wheels on this kid's rocking horse, and it, it's like maybe it was really like a really <clears throat> fancy rollerblade. The yeah, maybe they, they they hit the rock and it mistakenly fell apart as a perfect circle. It's perfect, dude. I'm... Oh my god, okay, wait, Tolu, this fucking blows my mind. You've never seen Spongebob, but there is a Spongebob episode that covers this. Oh, where, yeah? Uh, Spongebob's trying to learn how to sculpt, <laughs> and Squidward's trying to teach him. He's like, uh, it's like a kid. Oh, yes, this is kind of crazy how well this plays oh, it. Squidward is, like, going through how to draw a perfect circle, like, how to do all these... Or he's, like, you know, trying to teach him the techniques of being an artist. Yeah, but Spongebob yeah. in his dumbass brain is just, like, too good for what he's trying to do. He draws a perfect circle, and Squidward's like, what the fuck, how do you do that? Yeah, yeah. And he, like, he draws this full portrait of a guy, and he essentially just keeps erasing until he gets down to a perfect circle. <laughs> but then, he's sculpting, and... Uh, Squidward goes to hit it, hits it, the block shatters, and Spongebob goes, he hits it, and it just falls into a perfect statue. Um, so. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. And maybe that's how it yeah, went. Yeah, that was a good Circles episode. are just I really natural. Like I, I hadn't thought about that one in forever. Yeah, yeah but well, as soon as you said that, it's what made me think about it. And it kind of could play into it, right? Like, you could try to teach somebody how to do something, but unless you just you got it in you, you can't. You know? um, especially back when you think about how documentation was like what was documentation it was word of mouth <laughs> yeah word of mouth experience like, um, basically literally that it's a delicate thing 
I mean, we said books are fucking delicate too, right? <laughs> We've mm-hmm. seen that. Yeah. Um, so. Sometimes know, deliberately think... delicate. <laughs> and that's to the point of like, why can't we bring this up? Is because people literally burn books. Yeah. Yeah, you can. You just almost can't mess with like canon. Like whatever is canon is canon. Not the canon and then trying to over. Mm, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like in the late 1600s, we talked about this. The pioneers of the Enlightenment, they didn't publish their essay. Is just like f- to the public. They shared them. Not saying other. like well, we're the fucking dudes, you know, of the Enlightenment. But it's in a similar vein where like the established canon. Come, cracks down on you to the point of in their time murder yeah in our <laughs> time die. censorship yeah. and um it's the same it's um there's like an identity thing that you run into and when people have a problem with identity usually they go f- full out like you know <laughs> till yeah. death so Unless they've attached their, their you know, they have a certain it. at least alleviation of like a detachment from the concepts that they, you know, familiarize with. Like, if you don't identify with your ideas, like, so long as you just give an arguments and then you're like, oh, yeah, that's better evidence and can abandon it. Yeah. Like, people tie that's themselves where to people should be headed. Yeah. But like, it's even in small stuff. You want to be right about so many things. Like, so you want to be, you want to have some grasp, and not. And we do. And we're not completely gone. I mean, the fact that we're traversing through electricity and right now, I don't really understand. Like, you can hear me. Kind of cool. We're kind of cool, but <laughs> we're like, kind of sick. Uh, not gonna lie. But like the burn, the book burning is. It's wild. Very recent. Recent? It's currently taking place, isn't it? Like, like, yeah, with all this, uh, I don't know. I don't know, man. Like, LGBTQ shit. People forget really fast for some reason. I mean, maybe that's more of a recent thing. I think this is the second. Is because the thing is, it's like, what do people remember? What, where do they put their value? You know? Um, because it's like when you are the person in power, you, you forget anything bad that's happened to you. You restructure the narrative every time. Like, I don't know. It's like, for me, I, (laughs) this might be crazy. I would say like there, there's like a, there's like, I think the easiest example for me is just like any, anyone, any person who, who, who subscribes to something and then they attach themselves to it. So like something like the dem like being a Republican or something or being a Democrat like people attach that to their identity, and so once it becomes a part of your identity, now you 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 define yourself by it. And so when something happens to the ideology, then you feel like something is happening to you as well. And like I think that that comes across especially because it's like something like Egyptology, right? You spend your whole career doing something, you 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 are part of a, a long line of people who all did it, and you. You, you pride yourself on that. So then you feel like it's actually a character judgment when new information comes out that is that is incongruent with your prior beliefs. And so you have to shift your beliefs. You have to shift the world to match your beliefs or else you'll feel like you're being destroyed as like a as a human being like like this thing is attacking you like and that sounds like crazy but it, it's like i think it, it really is like that like it's like someone who, who puts their whole career on something they, they go to such lengths to hide information even if they used to be a just like a good person who used to like try their best to find the truth it's like once you define yourself by something it's like you you feel like it's a mo- it's a matter of survival to make sure it stays the status quo or whatever yeah easier that way <laughs> for your brain yeah it's like i don't ego, need to ego. worry it's for your ego. yeah it's, it's for your ego and like i was saying before right I, when we first like we a while ago i was talking about how people tie their ego to things like the the pyramids like, i don't well, yeah like i don't i don't mean the people who, who <clears throat> grew up under it like the like the ancient egyptians were like oh yeah that's been there for like ten thousand years but then like in the modern era it's like 
we've created a cultural narrative defining who we are as people in relation to these great features from the past. And we take that as like a, as like a ethnic and genetic descendancy of, of, of ability. You know what I'm saying? Yes. There's something to say too, for like wanting to be a trusted authority on something. And so if you're somebody who has previously voted on the side of some, uh, of a, if down the line you want to investigate if maybe uh, choice B was the correct one, that might look weird to your supporters and or the people funding you, especially nowadays when you're trying to uh, get grants, for example, or like trying to write for that. You have to present yourself as some sort of authority on a subject. And um, yeah, I think that brings a bad air to uh, certain fields um, I think a lot of people are like it's not generally not good to say you don't know something <laughs> like to say yeah. I have no fucking idea what's going on you know like everybody wants to hear no we, we know what's going on we, yeah but it, so. it's, it's interesting because it's just like the human the human um, part of human being human and like what makes us so effective is how easily we can be manipulated because it's like if you're trying to get a bunch of people to work together to do something for some particular reason, then like if you're able to convince them on some grounds to do such and such, it's much easier to get them all to work towards that end than it would be for some species of people who are who are who are more or less like I don't know, less not necessarily less dis- easily deceived, but but people humans rely a lot on their their emotions and how they feel about things. Even people who are like, I'm very logical and rational. It's like, okay, bro, put you in oh, front yeah. of Elon Musk and we'll see how you fare. <laughs> it's like, no matter how logical you think you are, you're being your, your, um, your emotions are always being appealed to. And like, that's why it's something like when it comes to like these systems, like the NHS or whatever, it's like half the battle, no matter how correct your information is, half the battle is, is perfecting your propaganda because human beings can't just take the truth. The truth has to sound nice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so it's like, even if I'm say, telling you things that are true or they're not, depending on like the circumstance, whether it's like something about cigarettes causing cancer or something like that. Say, okay, that could be That's a very true, true st- bro. That could be a very true statement. <laughs> but... So, but this if is it like... doesn't seem cool like if it doesn't seem like something <laughs> that's chill with the with the children like oh it's cool not to smoke and people are still gonna fucking smoke because they're all about participating in the community you know what i'm saying being amongst the people and so if the people are doing something people will do that even if it goes against their better judgment i mean just really quick on the smoking thing we have like decreased significantly the number of smokers just through like yeah. i think education honestly so that does help but uh they put, they put fucking dead people on the on the packages too so <laughs> not in the u.s they should though but so um oh. into the kind of add to your point it's like i think we're in a good time now where it's much harder to bullshit and get away with it you, you know a lot of fact yeah. checkers out there so yeah, um <laughs> this is good because now you have you have more uh more discussion happening right there's there's more conversation so that's that's good right you can only hope that it leads uh in the right direction but i think it's better than it ever was now like <laughs> in recent times yeah I mean, yeah but we're right at the cusp of like no that's cgi yeah like yeah. it's like oh this is all computer generated like we're in a because it's like it's like human beings are like are gonna be like basically as long as we call ourselves humans and we haven't become fucking the the dudes from halo 4 the promethean whatever <clears throat> as long as we're human beings we're, we're a, a appeal to emotion will always work so even if something isn't true if it seems like a good story people will it, people will latch onto it and that's an interesting thing to me because actually something that i think is so interesting is the concept of a story honestly is like stories like we've been saying like that's the only reason we have religions at all like we have any sort of notion of the past 
beyond what people could write down or whatever is because people can compact their history of their their people into a story and then everybody can latch on to that remember it internalize it like kind of commit it to their heart and then pass it on to the next generation so like i think like it's po- yeah it's like i think it's a positive and a negative you know it's like there's a reason why a god reflects its people like fucking zeus is fucking everybody like maybe that has something to do with the uh the greeks in general no i'm joking i don't i don't know anything about that i'm playing uh but uh, uh <clears throat> just like the concept of like... like that anyway go ahead well i mean it's tough to really understand how the greeks really thought of the gods or the particular time of Greek. Well, they didn't take them literally. I mean, some of them were definitely did. They fucking knifed the ocean, like the Mediterranean. Like, what are you doing? I mean, uh, they were like, there were river but, spirits, and then there were lightning. Right. Trying to fuck right. Poseidon. Yeah. Right. But when you read the, like, um, texts, they're like, um, they're talking about, the implication like their parables or like what like the meaning is they do the same thing that we're kind of doing now like they're not taking it like as a literal um mm. thing that happens they're like uh like sort of at what was it when um when you say they are you talking about like because is there like a progression the, plato's plato and aristotle's the the what is it called when they all congregate and they talk in like a seminar it's plato's opus council? thing like yeah, something in the council. yeah i know what you mean so, but uh it's like what they how they describe it um the cu- <laughs> it's right here hold on it's the <laughs> plato's confession Plato, plato's <laughs> <laughs> So Socrates touched me. <laughs> Where did he touch you? Is it Plato's Parmenides? Parmenides? There's Plato's like Parmenides. The... There's the Al- there's oh symposium. Symposium. Yeah, yeah, Boom. Yeah. Boom. So it's like dudes. Yeah, some, who were some part bros. Of the, there's some cool guys doing Plato's. the Eleusian mysteries. Taking that, yeah. Taking LSD, mind expanding. It's taking, like, taking L- LSD mold. Right there, drugged up. The Dionysian culture was more than just one. They had understandings of how to make things that, when you ingest them, give you certain experiences that are more than just drunkenness or like a calm. They're like. I'm seeing spirits right now. <laughs> like, that's the, what they write down. And then you're like, what? You're, they're tripping in the ancient times? The original so, I see dead people, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. And it's like they knew how to make that shit. And the Eleusian mystery was very guarded. Um, they would not spill the beans. Um, and it wasn't for everyone. It's hard to stomach some of this stuff. Right. Like, it's... Not for your average person who's just gonna your be like bear. totally crushed and for their identity and all that, you know. But you know, spin out. Yeah, some people take it better than others, mm. and you know, I don't know. Uh, we're talking about ancient Greeks, and they, so they were talking about these gods. Yeah. Right. And how they like we personify them and how they kind of project we project their behavior onto ourselves and yeah, or vice versa from ourselves and um, to them and then them back to us. Yeah. And my qu- my question is like do, is there like a uh, like a progression cuz it's like I understand that like Plato and Socrates are people who are like, bro, there's no god, bro. Come on. Or there's not there's not like 45 gods up there just like being stupid like it's not reasonable and but there's like a, there's an earlier 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 generation who's just like you know very frightened of their reality and is trying to understand why um because they, they keep they, fucking dying in in floods and shit well yeah or just like the one time anyways of the like why so serious why are yeah, why so, so serious, serious about this shit yeah like 
and then they forget the literal reason why they were so serious about it. And they create and, these personifications and then of that just, thing. Yeah, and they're scared for and, hundreds. Of, and then they attach stories and, to it because it's like I think over time it's like the story. It's like you even see it in modern day. Like if if the fucking the 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 twenty four hour news cycle could just fucking stop for thirty minutes, then you would probably see. It's like I just remember back when we were kids, like we would get some of these ridiculous stories from the nineties about shit that happened or like how. Like, you know, like Marilyn Manson took out his own rib. I don't know if you guys heard that story when we were kids. You remember that story? Took out his own rib to, to give himself the uh, the old self-suck. Yo, Felicio. Yeah. yeah. So it's like a story like that today, apparently. A pioneer in it's, it's, it's been re It's been remixed with, like, James Charles or whatever that dude's name is. <laughs> and it's like, uh, it's like. I feel like human beings quickly take a story and then continue to, to twist it over time. And like, there's so many crazy things that happen, but then new things happen. So nobody ever gets to twist a story or to change it or to embellish it or anything like this to create a I mean, myth out of it, you know? Yeah, there's an argument that literally every single literary piece out of the, out of, uh, <laughs> North, yeah, the US, but many other places probably, but that are taken inspiration from the Bible or that you can look to the Bible and make some connection i mean there's also the point of like the bible wrote about so fucking much that it's, yeah, it's they, pretty they, they easy they just to, covered like, every fucking and, because like they but, literally just uh, went from like they like the jewish people were just literally in like they went to every different culture they were in greece yeah, they yeah. were in egypt they they literally popped into every like like old world society to, especially uh, in i would say like our society books throughout the 20th century you yeah. can for sure make some relation um well, yeah I mean, but there's a lot of modern my english teacher in high school was pretty pretty adamant about that so maybe that's also partial brainwashing but mm -hmm. she she uh seemed well intentioned in in doing so she wasn't like a she didn't come to school with like a fucking cross and hand out to it all but you know like it wasn't like, give everyone a, a hand handheld yeah. bible like here you go give everybody it to eat mom. this cracker yeah don't tell your mom i gave you this <laughs> it gives you a bible <laughs> <laughs> but point being is like yeah it's um well yeah it kind of makes sense too word of mouth is people that was the method of transportation for ideas and history and so, all that so it's quite easy playing telephone over the years things are going to get twisted and... yeah and i think um another thing that uh another thing to bring up more data to really digest for the listeners is that since the younger dryas human beings is brain volume has actually decreased by by the size of a tennis ball nice. and our brains have shrunk <laughs> since then and that's like uh, next to being probably coincident with writing that they think maybe yeah i mean i've heard that i mean de most definitely for sure like we're all it's some part. yeah for sure like we're definitely like relying more on the technology than our brains you know so it's like most people if you ask them like if they didn't really like you like our brain our our are our human brains bigger or smaller than they have ever been and people would be like they're bigger we're smarter now but they've shrunk <laughs> interesting so and, do you think so in you a think rapid rate because of writing because if it's rapid it sounds like it's because of a younger the younger dryas that caused it it's well, I think it more so a dependence on yeah yeah it would be de it's definitely involved with that and the dependence thing is a major probably the dependence factor. thing what's that on tech on technology oh on technology yeah. well, then um, damn our brains are about to become little peas bro yeah, yeah. give us give us 500 give us a thousand years the fuck about to be they always show with aliens little... with huge ass heads they should show aliens with the tiniest little fucking looking, head looking like burnt matchsticks out here 
like a, a body just and you have this little legs. like wiggly thing on your fucking head. <laughs> One eye in the well, middle. Well, mm -hmm. There's gonna be babies. Babies. Yeah. The babies in spacesuits. Um, yeah, with diapers and, yeah. and like harps. And, like, <laughs> yeah, and, and wings. And, they, <laughs> and there's just like these huge eye covered eight, um, creatures with wings. Be not afraid. Hey. I'm a biblically accurate angel. <laughs> you guys ever seen those shits? No. Damn, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, you should look that shit up. Those shits is crazy. And they're actually in the Bible. That's like the most wildest thing, bro. If I wanted anything in the universe to actually be real, it would be biblically accurate angels. Imagine you're just walking down the road to Galilee, bro, and this dude just pulls up on you and he rends your brain apart. <laughs> and your consciousness um fucking collapses in on itself for a brief moment. <laughs> I mean, what sick, are you honestly. doing really when you huff DMT? What are they? What are they doing? Right, when they do you're that? probably honestly be nodding afraid. Don't be I afraid don't. of the DMT blasting through your fucking brain right now. Yes, sir. <laughs> do not look under my towel. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's hilarious. It's like you get, you know how they get beamed into like the palace. It's just like a, a sauna. It's like a bathroom, <laughs> and there's a dude. He's just like, <laughs> he's like, do you want knowledge? He's like, I got an apple <laughs> for you right here. <laughs> he drops oh, on got... the ground, and he's like, oops. Oh, oh, whoa! Could, could you pick that up for me? <laughs> You're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> but it is crazy how and you like, come back and you're like, three, you're, you're just like come back from DMT and you're just like 3.141 so 3.141 <laughs> absolutely tweaked to pieces <laughs> like, bro. A squared plus B squared C squared <laughs> you're just like delivering Shit. knowledge but you're just like traumatized yeah. absolutely. like what's wrong with him what happened <laughs> like the, the angel 3.141 Jesus Christ. Yo, the angels, ah. these, like, I'm just looking at, like, this thing of angels. I guess I'm going to add it to the, if I can do this, I'm going to add it to the chat for this, this thing, so you guys can look at it. This is just some dude like, who did, like, a bit, like, thing, just, like, it's just very interesting, just how ridiculous they look. Like, you could make an anime out of this shit, bro. It's like a fucking, uh, oh, shit. They're like, like, How? Like, we, yeah, what thing of that human do could, like, lead you to, like, something like this? Well, the Thronus one looks awfully like what's been coming up in the news recently. It's been coming up in what? If any guys pay, pay, pay the news with the UFOs. Oh, the UFO. <laughs> the but UFO. we don't have to talk about the stuff. Yeah, this is, uh... But the uh, Commander Grush. Oh, my God. Um, but... You know, some of that stuff, I mean, definitely the Thronus one, I would say, is like, I mean, like, how else, I mean, ah, we don't have to get, we're talking about history, we're talking about people, we don't have yeah. to talk about aliens. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, mythology is in the title, that's all, that's that's what we can talk, it's in the uh, the Twitch um, history. title. History. Is it on yeah. Um... So, yeah. Um, well, boys, so, all right. what, what did you do with something you wanted to say? You want to continue? No, no, no. I mean, let's, let's summarize, right? Yeah, let's, let's, yeah, uh, the, wanna... the Egyptians were on steroids. They were jacked, giga jacked, and loaded up on T. And they were just loaded on T. And they fucking, yes. and they... This they fucking sheer too much willed bread. that shit. Sheer willed it. Deadlifted. Imagine deadlifted. They lifting. fucking pu they push that those babies. Oh, Somebody they just had a world's strongest man competition every. They built like mega tunnels too. Let me grab they this fucking, guy too. Yeah, no. Rummaging in the dirt and hoisting big rocks, um, and then they like, just ate up the bedrock. Yeah. <laughs> Eight, eight, eight gravel. <laughs> That's how they mix their cement. Yeah. <laughs> they did eight gravel. Yeah. 
Yeah, they uh, just ate it, and then it's like you know those those memes where it's like my body is a machine that turns gravel into cement. Have you ever seen those fucking? Maybe you haven't seen those, but uh, it's it's like that. Maybe, but um, okay. Is there okay? There's actually maybe one last thing that we should talk about. Like, so there's this whole concept of the Earth being in a shooting gallery, and like how that plays into a lot of these events, and also the mythology surrounding them. Because I feel like there's this whole thing where there's like what is it the Ast- Aster Astrides or something like that? It's like these these seven stars that are like near where the sun is or something. And so a lot of times we pass through this 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 place like twice a year. Do the the is it through the not not Orion is it Orion's belt? We pass through it twice a year. And in those times we get these meteor showers and asteroids that come by, right? And there's this whole concept of seven sages connected to these seven stars and stuff like that and all these different things and different religions that talk about basically um asteroids and these meteors as like doomsday concepts and how that has been like a like some sort of like a warning passed down i don't know i don't know if you guys think about that kind of stuff but... when they talk about that in the cosmographia podcast a lot yeah. um I, uh, you know, to the, I'm not sure that the people that made these astronomical structures, because it seems pretty clear that they were at least aligned purposefully to some sort of astronomical mapping or understanding to their cosmology or whatever. Yeah. Like, um, to the extent that they are that something was coming that like uh or it, that they thought it fell out of the sky out of that zone and then they just like link that astrological sign with the coming of whatever because it's coincident with like some stream of c- rubble hurling through the through the everything um like I don't know if they knew that or if that was a regular thing. I mean maybe I mean it seems like they had, were collecting data for a long time, you know, they were they, some of their understanding seems to like you said there's like a 1% or this is on a different thing, but it's like you can see some sort of tilt in the spin of the earth. Yeah, the perception. Like a rate, like, one percent in a lifetime you could like 70 years you can see like little tilt um, yeah or measure that and it tilts, but being so. able to to measure that and maybe i mean it points to a definite definite study of the sky yeah they strong were, like, looking at it intently intently um they're trying to figure stuff out i don't know their starting premises though of mm, like the why way that they, were they doing it. yeah and I don't know if that stream is necessarily understood or if they had lenses or anything like that. Maybe, like, that would be cool if they had big glass spheres that they looked at the sky through. That would be cool. But um, I don't know if that is necessarily known. Like, it seems to be more, like, um, sort of hidden, like, or just something sort of that you have to piece together through various um, parcels of adjacent, maybe. I mean, it seems like these people were up to something, dude. I don't know. Yeah, you know, when we hopefully maybe the, the next time we uh, we do this, I want to I want to look more in particularly into the. Um, into this stuff with the asteroids honestly and like how does they how are they reflected in people's cultures because i feel like they're they're reflected that in the procession is reflected in a lot of really cool ways it seems like but then also i'd like to talk more about like the younger dryas impact 
itself in terms of like exactly how it how it went down as far as the theories that are especially stuff relating to someone who i feel like is pretty reputable is like randall carlson seems like he just always has a, he has a lot of evidence to back up what he's saying and he doesn't really kind of stray from that so he's always interesting to to uh to see what he's got going on so um but yo boys any any final thoughts um or or, or final comments um no not really i feel like we talked we jumped around a ton so don't have many concluding thoughts i think it's all shit's crazy don't trust anybody <laughs> don't trust anyone do your own research yeah we're just getting started baby we're on to unpack <laughs> mystery getting we're gonna started, get to yeah. the bottom of it yeah. we're gonna discover it here first you heard it you heard uh, it here yes sir all of it will be solved. so yeah i mean the only thing i think is that you know don't don't cling too confidently to what you currently believe like understand the reasons for why you believe it and always be ready to change your mind that, that's all i got always always believe in yourself <laughs> well some of you shouldn't believe in yourself you should just kind of no, some of you guys play. fucking <laughs> some suck. Suck. <laughs> you should be ashamed of yourself for why and how you live your life like the two dumbass yeah. chatters that were just in here a second ago never <laughs> chat again <laughs> <laughs> never chat again um okay well thank you everybody for tuning in on our first this is our first episode of uh the podcast that i don't have a name for we're gonna call it the podcast um and you you've just we've just talked oh. to kaden and um jacob on some exciting exciting topics this evening so um i am going to end it here i'm gonna i'm gonna mute you guys I'll- Thank you.